happy Sunday. I think I've got the threads set up. Let's see what happens. I'm logging on a little bit early. Kirsten, you are there. It is working. I've gone back and forth a lot with timing today. I am sorry about that. I'm going to quietly start up and give everybody a chance to catch up. I'm not going to start hooking yet. This is recorded, so you can watch it later. I'm going to get going with transferring my piece. So if you haven't seen this done yet, I'm keeping an eye on the thread. This is the piece we're working on tonight. And I think I need to find my, yeah, I'm going to have to get the little dots. We're going to be putting in these um, pennies a little bit later today. All right, it's working. That's great. All right, I'm going to quietly get started. I'm keeping an eye on the thread. I'm going to start transferring this. I'm going to make sure that we have everything we need. Whitney, good to see you. Oh, I haven't seen you for a while. We're going to see if we have everything we need here. Um, your backing might be different than mine, but I'm going to start. I'm not, um, I'm never set up, right? I do everything from the beginning. So let's get going. Oh, it's right here. I was going to say, where's my piece of fiber tape? Oh, it was right there. All right, so I've got my fiber tape over my linen here, and I'm going to trace this, and then we're going to make sure that we are in place, and we're going to get started. I don't know if you're if you're watching live now, which not many people are yet, but if you're logging on later, um, if you're working on this piece, you do not, hey, Linda, you do not have to do it the same way that I'm doing it, right? And if you're working on a different piece, great. It's just great to be together. Um, you can work on whatever you want. And if you are asking questions about a different piece than Willow Weep for me, this Willow Tree, that's totally fine. You can ask questions about any piece you're working on. You can ask questions about different uh, textile mediums and punch, uh, whatever you're working on. You can ask questions about that in the thread. And you know on a night like tonight, as more people get logged on, there should be a good, a good group here. And if you ask a question that I don't know the answer to, probably somebody else does know the answer, so... We'll get it sorted. This is going to be my willow wheat for me because mine is not ready. It has been a runaround day. We have family coming in today from uh, the Netherlands. So there have been a lot of huge question marks with timing and stuff like that. So I was a little bit thrown for a loop earlier. Um, but yep, yeah, obviously I'm here in the studio now and it is fine. Just a bit of a stressy um, day with twist, twists and turns, you know. So this looks like maybe a hard pattern, and it's really not. This is going to be a very easy pattern to fill in. It's uh, going to be a simple beginner pattern. The thing about this that I wanted to do, hey, Colleen, good to see you. Hey, Linda H., um, is that I wanted to do more than one sort of medium on it. I wanted to do more than one technique. So besides hooking, I'm going to be doing those little um, pennies. And I do have pennies around me. I could just use these, I suppose. I've, I've got some in here from a past... I could just do that. I could pick some of these out. Gosh, I wonder if I have, this is going to be at the very, yeah, I do have a needle. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive, huh? Um, I definitely have a needle. This, I'm just gathering my stuff for later in the episode at the very end, my bits and pieces with um, needles and stuff like that. If you're working on, Melissa, good to see you. Catherine, Catherine good to see you. Um, if you're working on something different, you know, then you just tune out when I'm talking about something that doesn't apply. Oh, look, there's even more needles. Oh, those are even better, actually. So I'm just getting out supplies for later. And uh, we don't need all this now. I just want to be sure I have everything for later. All right. I'm just tracing out my guy on fiber tape. If you are new to hooking and pattern making, I screwed that up. Did you see that? And I have a really dull um, Sharpie going here. When I do yours, I have all the best stuff. You know, when I do my stuff, ah, not so, not so best. Whitney says, I would love it if you would suggest or create, sell an ultra punch threader uh, that is indestructible. Do you mean the actual threader, like the silver thing that you put through the eye of that tiny punch? Because um, yeah, I could figure that out for sure. Oh, I'm glad to see you too, Whitney. Um, yeah, you know, I have one of those um, because I have an ultra punch, but more often than my ultra punch, I often use my, uh, what is it called, pretty punch. And and I have quite a few threaders for that. And the threaders actually, we're talking about mini punch or ultra punch if you're joining us, uh, which is also called uh, Russian punch, right? So the threader for that looks like, let me see if I can draw it. It's a very strange thing. See if I can draw. I'm going to draw one for you on the side of our 
willow weep for me pattern it's a weird looking thing it looks like this hold on let me show you down here it looks like a little rectangle of white kind of paper and it's got a thing on it like this that's a long it's hair it's a hair of a silver wire and it's clipped in between two pieces of paper in the form of a white rectangle on top it's a weird looking it's about that size too and it's one of these things that if you ever had it and you might have lost this threader and you pick up your couch cushions you might look at it and go what is that i have never seen that before um, but that's what the one looks like that i use and i know that on amazon i know that you can buy sets of three threaders if you put in pretty punch it should also work for ultra punch right pretty punch is um ultra punch has more sizing uh variety so it's more forgiving pretty punch not so much so if this works on pretty punch i would think it would work on anything with an eye like an eye of a needle so look for that on uh, amazon but i'm also going to think about stocking that because i do want to do more um, with mini punch i mean i when i say more I, i've done miniature punch but I don't typically do it with you and I really would like to. So let's come back here, let's finish this. I don't wanna start hooking too, too early because I know a lot of people, this morning I wasn't sure what time I'd get back to this part of, of, well, to Connecticut. So I ended up getting back earlier than I thought and then I thought, oh, let's start a little bit earlier and then I thought, oh no, I don't know if anybody saw that message. I'm so sorry about the back and forth. It's just been one of these busy uh, logistical days because we have family in from abroad. Um, and it just posed some tricky travel problems today, but we got there in the end. We got there in the end. I just don't want to start too, too soon. So I'm just tracing out. I transferred my willow onto fiber tape, and now I'm just tracing her out, and I'm going to check out the comments, and then I'm going to get her mounted on the frame. Rosalind, I hope that you're finding me here. I'm going to check the phone, too. I made a bit of a pig's breakfast of this, but... This one's for me, right? I never send out patterns that are uh, pig's breakfasts. The pig's breakfasts stay with me because um, I'm used to navigating my own messes here. So if it's not perfect, that's absolutely okay. You're going to see when we start hooking this pattern, and I'm going to be hooking this from beginning to end. I've got it set out as a circle, right? This is how this pattern is meant to look, and I'm going to give you some ideas. If you are hooking this pattern with me, I'm going to say, like with our last one that we did, Little Foxes, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a fast hooker, but up, but up, up, up. I wouldn't say that at all, but I'm probably faster than a beginner. So if you're a beginner and you're following me like it's a class, don't get frustrated, right? Because this is recorded. This will be on the Ribbon Candy Hooking channel forever, I hope. Uh, I don't mean to take it down anyway. So if you, let me come a little bit closer to this guy. If you want to watch it later, that's fine. Everybody does hook at different um, speeds, right? So there's no way we're ever going to be able to uh, sync up completely. Um, so I might hook a little bit fast. That's the point. And if I do, you just, you do what you're doing, right? You do what you're doing and then come back to me or watch later. It's going to be a lot of rinse and repeat. You know what I'm going to be doing tonight? I'm going to be pulling up loops, like lots of them. And I'm going to fill this in. <laughs> So once you see me pulling up loops, it's just going to become a question of what is she doing? Is she what is she going around here with this line or that line? I'm going to show you what my choices are as far as directional hooking. And I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing that I'm going to attack in this composition, and the question will always come up, what should I do first? It really depends on you too, right? Because that's a bit <clears throat> personal. Hold on, I got my tea here. I want to, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a bunch of buddies on here and I haven't even said hello yet. Do you see my space is a little bit different behind me? That desk there is where I normally stand to record the coffee time. So I've got a beautiful Priscilla rug under me at this moment. Uh, and I've got a new kind of setup here. I'm right in the windows of this room. And then the studio has uh, three other rooms and then one enormous room. This is about 1,200 square feet in here. But um, this, the, the Jay rearranged because he's moving some of his antique stuff a few rooms down. And he rearranged our mantle that you see in coffee time. But you can see the rug that you probably never see that I have hanging behind it there. Um, gosh, you know, I really want to show you something else. First things first. So let me see. Diane, great to see you. You were hooking 20 years ago. Come on and do it again. Do it again when you feel like it, right? Do it again. Maybe you want to watch for a while, but you're going to want to jump in hopefully sooner rather than later. 
And when you do, we're going to be here. We're going to be here to jump with you and uh, answer all those questions. And, and it's so great to know that you're feeling it again, right? Everything comes in cycles. And uh, this is one of those things for sure. That'll be fun to, to do some stuff together. Country Gal 1854. What's the 1854 from? That is such a good year. Oh, that's a good old year. I'm new here and I've been wanting to learn about cooking and punch needle. Fantastic. So, you know, I might do a little bit of both just to mix things up. There's no reason why I shouldn't do a little punch needle here tonight. As long as I can find a punch needle, I, I think I can. Since we've been moving stuff around, it's everything is a bit um, unsettled and it's been a bit of a busy day. So I'm a little bit scattered, but I'll settle down as soon as we get going. I'll do some um, hooking and then we'll talk about punch. I started the second punch project. Remember, I just did elephant in the room. I started a second one with a whale um, the other night. So that's super exciting. Um, and that'll, that'll, that'll lead us through some punch conversations as well. Not tonight with that project, but if I can find a punch, I can add to this piece and we can have kind of a two for one special. Ryan, good to see you. Hello. So, ha oh, Catalina, great to see you again. How are things going? You're out in California, right? Good to see you. All right. Lucille, a.k.a. Lucy from Maine. Lucy from Maine, great to see you. Sonia, hello in Louisiana. Great to see you. Lisa, hello, friends. Chrissy, happy Sunday night. Good to see you. Anne in New Brunswick, good to see you. Lots of buddies logged on, and we'll be logged on for a couple of hours. So if you come and go, I, I'm very happy to have you for any length of time that you can stay. I am committed to staying and working tonight. So I'm just looking around me. Um, give me just a minute. Let me see. I'm going to put you. I'm going to put you here. Looking at our usual site, you're seeing the back of the set, really. Um, let me let me see. I would really like to help with the punch thing. Let me see if I can quickly find a punch. Because that would be fun. That would be fun. Even if I could just do a few little. Let me come right back. Because my butt is going to be in the thing. Sorry about that. You probably never see my butt, right? I'll be right back. I'm looking for a punch needle. see. It's great to move stuff around because you feel all fresh and new. Um, huh. So that's a to be continued. I'm going to think on that while we're working because I remember I saw some punches. I was looking for a bunch of them and I thought they must be at home. And then I found a bunch and I thought you have got to be kidding me. Um, not saying any right now, but we'll see how it goes. It might be that my brain says, oh, I remember where the punch needles are, and then I could do a little bit of punching. If not, we can always do it next time. It is fun to mix it up, though. All right, so let's see. Let me take a quick sip here, come back to you here, and we're going to settle down in a second. Jean, good to see you. Oh, it's, it's going to be country gal. It's going to be super fun uh, to follow along, and you're going to see that I'm doing the same things over and over and over um, it's very meditative and relaxing and it's a lot of repeat. So it just becomes a question of technique and variety and new projects and new colors. Um, and I'll show you as, as we go along with a craft as simple as this, with just the one stitch, uh, what kind of variety and differences that you can make personality wise in your own piece. So that'll be one of the things that we talk about on a longer episode like this. Uh, Gene, you are so good. There's nothing for you to learn, but I'm super happy you're there to keep us company. All right, I'm going to come down here, and we're going to get started. Um, again, I want to remind you that this is recorded, so don't worry about it if you miss something. Mm. All right, I'm going to get my frame out, and I just transferred this with my fiber tape, which is the way that I usually transfer stuff, and you've seen me do that before. And I'm on linen. I'm going to put it so that it faces you, and I'm going to make sure that we are in a good situation here. And I can even bring a little bit more light in, and we can get some traction, we can chat, and I'm going to look up every couple seconds to see if you've asked any questions. I'm just going to get us really 
really well positioned. This is fiddly. There we go. Don't worry, I'll make sure the light and everything is perfect. And I want this to be facing you. And then I just did it upside down. So, you know, this is a circle. And um, it might be that you don't want yours to be a circle. I was thinking of it as kind of, you know, like a willow dinner plate, right? So that's kind of where my head was at with this design. And I made mine a circle. But you know with your piece, if you got this pattern from me, you know that there is a lot of material around the edge, right? It's not like it's not like you've got a good four inches or more on on every side. So you know that it is well within the realm of possibility if you want your piece to be uh, larger or boxed out or turned into a pillow, right? Then you can easily square it out and fill in the area around it. And I'm, I'm not going to fill in all of it on this show or we're going to be in many hours of time. But I just want to remind you, if you are a beginner, I'm going to come to this corner here and I'm going to say, if I want to box this out, this kind of, right, I usually, I usually measure things like this, about this, about this, close enough. That's, that's about how precise I am uh, in my own work. And I literally, I have to, I have to, have to, have, there's not a lot of have to's with this craft. I'm following the grain with the Sharpie, right? And then I get that perfect square. And I come down, if I want to do this as a square, I have it stretched over a frame right now, so it's pulling in a not necessarily perfectly straight direction. I have to be sure for myself that I am making it perfectly straight, even if it doesn't look straight because it's stretched. I have to make sure that if I intend to make this pattern into a squared piece for a pillow or something and I want it to be perfect, then I have got to make sure. We are so lucky with this craft that we are working on a woven backing, whether it's monk's cloth, rug warp, uh, burlap, or linen, as this is linen, mine is linen anyway, um, you know, you can easily see the grain, right? Even from this distance, you can easily see the threads that make up the, the sort of warp weft, or however you want to, north, south, however, whatever language you want to use. Uh, it's very easy to see those lines and it's very easy to follow those lines. So if you are going to box out later, remember to keep it nice and neat. Now, this is the pattern and we started with the conversation. I'm going to put a piece of material under this because I think it's bumping around and making too much noise. There we go. I started with the conversation when you're approaching a new piece, where do you start, right? And if you're a beginner, the answer is it's up to you. Right. It, I'm not a control freak and um, I, I, that's not the way that I teach. It is absolutely up to you. It might be right when I make a puzzle, I do the I do the border first always. I don't usually do that with rug hooking and I probably won't do this with this piece. But if you're starting this piece and you're thinking, wow, it would make a big difference mentally to me. Things would be a lot more tidy and contained. If I just did have a line going right around the edge of it, that would make me feel more secure. Right. If you know that about yourself, then that's the first thing that you should do. You should pause me if you're watching on replay and you should do that. Right. If you know that that's what you like, then you should do that. For me, I typically go for uh, in what in my mind is an obvious uh, sort of low hanging fruit of a choice. And in this case, my eye wants to do this line first. You see how this sweep is like one continuous piece. My eye kind of wants to do that first, but then when I think about it, this line ends in this line. So what I'm gonna do first is this line. That's my choice, and it doesn't punch needle is right outside your door. Okay, thanks, Jay. It's up to you, right? If you're gonna follow me, I'm gonna start with this. And and I don't I haven't I haven't hooked this before. So I'm gonna hook it for the first time with you. You, if you bought this pattern, you have way more material than you are going to use. So I'm going to fool around with color and make it the way that I like it. You make it the way that you like it too. If you see me plugging in a color and you think, oh, chartreuse does not go well next to dusty rose, then don't do it. But for me, it might be that I like it and that's my choice um, and I'm going to go for it, right? So you go for what seems to make sense for you. I'm going to talk you through color as we go. I'm looking at my colors now. I've got a lot of the yellows. This pack included a, ye a lot of yellows, a lot of greens, um, some pinks, right? Some pinks, some grays. This set is based on the swatch set that I just put out that's called Springtime in Central Park. 
So there's some orchids, there's some lilacs, very soft purples, very soft colors, some flesh colors, some different shades of pink and peach. Uh, and then there are some poison colors, like the really bright yellows, right? Along with, this is more of a peach. It's, it's nighttime, so it's maybe hard to tell. And then I've got some mustards and colors like this, right? One thing that I know for sure is if you have this kit, you have, you have a darker brown color that looks something like this. This is the color that I plan to use for um, the trunk. So I'm going to be using that on this piece. I don't, I don't know because I haven't hooked it yet if I'm going to go all the way up with the same color. I might just hook it to here and then carry on with a different color. We'll see. But first, I'm going to make a decision about this. My idea when I was putting the kit together was to hook the ground pretty green. So I'm going to choose a color that's going to match well with the green. And I think I'm going to... I'm going to pick a weird kind of mustardy color. And again, you pick what you want. This is kind of a brownie mustard color with a little bit, it's like an old gold, like a kind of greeny gold. I think I'm going to start with this. So you choose which one you want. I'm filling in this one here. And there is no science, right, to picking what color you're going to, you're going to plug in first. It becomes a question of do you want to do the border first? Do you want to go from top to bottom? Do you want to go from uh, bottom to top? Um, it does something like that, it, depending on how technical of a thinker you are, as soon as you get started, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer, it might be that your brain says, that doesn't make sense. I need to do this first or I'm going to be um, unhinged, right? I'm not going to feel... I'm not going to feel like things are right if I do do it in the order you're doing it in. It's good to know that about yourself, right? Because we're all different kinds of technical. And some of us, are, like me, are hardly technical at all. I go with what makes obvious sense to me. And this, there is no right way. There is no right choice for what am I going to attack first. This stood out to me as something that was going to root, literally root the tree in place. Um, give it give it a, a base, right? So it made sense for me to start it uh, here. And, and what I'm doing for beginners, I'm pulling up loops, right? So I'm going to show you this in better detail in a second. I just went that whole length just doing this one piece right here. And I'm going to go for number two. Now I know that the background I want to be green. So I think I'm going to start plugging in a little bit of green here. Let's see what happens. To make the next one green. What I'm doing, beginners, if you have not hooked at all, I'm working backwards and upside down, so it's a little tricky for me, but I can do this. I'm literally putting in my hook, and underneath the frame, uh, I don't think you can see it from there. Let me back you up. I don't know if the teaching frame is here. Hang on. I'm going to see if I can show you under here. So if you're a beginner, this isn't going to be a great demonstration, but this hand is feeding the wool strip or the piece of yarn up to this hand. Right? So I'm going to describe what my hand is doing underneath because I'm not, I'm not doing a full blast beginner thing, but I am saying my hand just fed the hook underneath the surface of the backing fabric, that green strip. And now another one. And this top hand is just pushing through and searching for where's the strip? Where's the strip? And the other hand is feeding it to it. And does it take a little bit of practice for the hand that's underneath to get used to handing up that strip? Yeah, it takes a lot of practice, right? That's the whole craft, isn't it? Because you get going and people will say, oh, I keep twisting my um, loop underneath which is a very common thing to do, particularly with a wider strip. Like for me, I'm working in a number eight. That's a wide strip. That's known as a primitive strip. It's very easy to twist the strip. But you know what? When you're a beginner, you might twist the strip a lot. You might tr twist every time you pull up for quite a while. But then one day you're going to notice that you're not twisting your strips anymore, that your hook is just reaching down and you're feeding into the crook right? This is the crook. You're feeding into the crook that strip and it's catching it and it's pulling it up to the surface and it's making a loop. Uh, but it does take practice. And if it doesn't happen easily, perfectly, you know, naturally for a little while, 
It doesn't mean that you're not meant to do this. It just means that you need to practice because it's something new. We all have to practice new things, right? We always do. Sometimes, oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's the teaching frame. Mm -hmm. All right, good. I'm going to show on the teaching frame real quick because I know a lot of you are seasoned hookers. But if you're not, this is just paint, by the way. This is my work table. And look what else turned up, a punch. So we'll play with that later, too. This is my teaching frame. If you are absolutely a beginner and you want to look up for this, let me show you what, we're, what we got going on here. It's worth it. And if you already know this, you just keep going. So this is a teaching frame, meaning this is a piece of window screen, right? So this is not what rug hooking looks like. This is just for teaching. My hook is up here, and I'm ready to reach down and pull up a loop. So this hand on top is holding the hook in any position you want, right? Whatever's comfortable in your hand, reaching down. This hand here is feeding the strip onto the crook right here. <laughs> I blew. I blew very. This, I, I'm very happy to do this always, right? I just want to be sure that you can see okay. Right down. Now this hand, this is the hand that does the hard part underneath, right? This is the hard part. And unfortunately, this hand is probably not your dominant hand. You typically hold the hook in your dominant hand. This is the dummy under here. But this dummy has to do the hard part. This is the heavy lifting. So hook comes down. This hand here is just going to be going like this, right, like, like a machine. This hand has to find the hook. Here it is. Has to feed the wool into the crook. And then your smart hand just pulls up the strip, right? And I leave the tail on top. Right, we're going to come back to that in a second. And then I go to the next hole that I mean to go to. We'll talk about spacing in a minute. And again, wrapping the strip around the crook and pulling it up. And here's my loop. And how tall do my loops, am I supposed to pull my loops up? How tall do I want my loops? I'm doing my own camera work, as you can see. See my loop? How tall does he want to be? Well, typically, your loop, the general rule, Right? If you're a rules person, the general rule is it should be as high as your strip is wide. Right? That's the general rule. It might be that you're a high hooker and your loops are more like that. And if that's the way you like it, then that's the way you should do it. But just be aware with quantity. If you are a very high hooker, you might run out of materials. Right? If you have a kit situation, you might run out of materials. If you, this is a more of advanced, uh, an advanced thought. If you're pulling your, your loop up high, it might be because you mean to clip it with the scissors, right? When people have a lot of loops up, sometimes at the end, they clip them. Right? And then you get a clip drug that's more like a latch hook rug, right? And you cannot clip your, you can't make a clippy if your loops aren't high enough because they'll just fall back through. But what we're doing is pulling up loops. That is the more traditional rug hooking move. And I'm literally moving from one space to the next. And the reason I say space is because you can't put a loop in absolutely every space or it'll become too dense and puckered. And it's what we call packed. It'll become too packed. And your piece will get all buckled and kind of misshapen um, because there's too many loops and there's not enough backing material for them, right? These are thick. So you go into the next space that makes sense, not necessarily the next physical hole. And that is something that you have to figure out as you go along, right? You figure out how you hook, right? You try to make them somewhat even if you want to. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you like wild and crazy. The reason my company is called Ribbon Candy Hooking is because when you're doing it right, it really looks like ribbon candy from the side, right? But you don't have to go for this, and mine isn't perfect, but you don't have to go for this quite perfect, even pile. If this doesn't do it for you, then don't do this. If you like to do a bit more wild and crazy, British, Canadian kind of rag rug style, and you're pulling up an area that looks like bushes and stuff, and you're, you're like doing stuff like this, this technique is called higgledy-piggledy. I'm not going in any direction. I'm just pulling as I go, go in different heights. Some are higher, some are lower. I'm going all, all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And maybe I want to hook that way. Maybe I want to hook that way all the time, right? 
Maybe I don't want somebody telling me that this is correct and that this is incorrect. Maybe this is this makes my heart sing and this makes me feel like I'm at home goods, right? It's up to you. These are not, these are not judgments. These are opinions and this is all based on how you feel and how you instinctively want to work. There's nothing wrong with this. This is fantastic, right? This is fan if this is you and this is not you, then be this. But if this is you, and you're like, well, I, I like to start off right on the right foot and I like things to be even. I, I like to know the rules before I break the rules. Then strive for this first. Strive for this first. But see how it goes, you know. The reason we leave the tails up when we start is because it's way too easy when your hook is there and you're, and you're, looking, for, you're looking for the tail, right? If, if I left all of my tails underneath, there'd be more than one of these guys under here swinging around, right? So when I stick my hook down, since this hand can't see through my actual backing fabric, what are the chances I'm going to do that? It's 100%, isn't it? It's not even 90%. It's like 100%. I'm going to accidentally pull the wrong one and yank a bunch of loops out. It's not like knitting, right? I'm not going to pull out half the sweater. But it is still irritating when you pull out something that you don't mean to pull out. So we leave our loops on top. We can always come back to that later if you want to look some more at that. I'm coming back I'm coming back to the piece now you can see I've got my the first two sort of rows in happy with this I'm gonna just bring you on top of me a little bit more adjust the camera I'm gonna have a sip of my tea too I'm not a barbarian I've got to sip my tea here mm. oh country gal you say I'm a cross stitcher and a quilter Where's a good place to find supplies for hooks and punch needle? At Ribbon Candy Hooking, that's my store. If you go on ribboncandyhooking.com, I've got beginner punch needles, which I use all the time. Um, and I've got different sizes of hooks. Um, I'll also say, and just, just to be absolutely transparent, which I hope I always am, um, sometimes with beginners, if I'm teaching, I have a good example right here, I don't always use uh, a rug hook because uh, these are the hooks that I really like the most for beginners. These are crochet hooks, and it's a 3.5 um, millimeter. So this is at a, this for me works as well as a rug hook. If you can see the crook, this one's still in its package. But what I like about this is it's a great beginner hook. It's super inexpensive. I, I stock rug hooks, right? So I don't stock crochet hooks. But if you have a craft store, this is there, and this is like under five dollars. This works great for me. This works as well. I'm going to say it as this. This is my Hartman hook. So this is like a $78 hook. This is a $4 hook. Honestly, this is the one I had in the pocket, my, my, the pocket of my jean jacket. So I'm using this one. If this was the one I had in the pocket of my jean jacket, for me, it's going to work the same. Now, I'm a bit lowbrow when it comes to supplies. I'm I've always done crafts. I've always done arts. And, and I'm very confident about my hands and whether I'm holding this or I'm holding this for me it's not going to make any difference I'm going to just go for it and I'm really not going to think that I'm not going to overthink that part of it some people love a specific hook because it's especially tactile because it helps with the arthritis right L typically the larger the hook the closer it is to a knob shape the more uh, easy it is on your hands and wrists if you have ha hands problems I don't have that really so far. So I'm fine with this and I'm fine with this. And for a beginner, I love this hook. It has the same kind of shiny, slippery top as this. It's got a great crook, pretty much exactly the same as that. And it's got these uh, the silicone um, handle on it. So it's very easy to hold it. And yeah, I mean, it's also great to start. Also great to start. So if you're starting, might as well start with stuff that doesn't make you cry yourself to sleep because it costs tons and tons of money. But I do stock frames and I stock materials and kits and anything that you see on my site you can get as a kit if you if you want. Uh, even if it's not listed as a kit, I can make anything for hooking or punch. Um, and I do have all kinds of hooks and I have um, all kinds of frames for punch and hooking. So I'm going to come back over here. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to go back for that weird color. I'm not going to keep all my colors the same. I'm making choices as I go along. I'm big into the yellows because for me this kit came with a lot of colors and as I say you can make some choices as you go. I'm just going to continue this line. Do you see how that first strip didn't quite, hey Sharon, didn't quite make it across. So I'm just going to continue that strip so it's done 
and it is a little bit higgledy-piggledy. While this is a directional line, it's a wavy line, right? So it doesn't really work the same as a straight across line. When we talk about directional hooking, we're talking about making a thoughtful and intentional decision about the direction you're hooking in. Um, and for me, this is a wavy line. So my thoughtful and intentional direction is up and down wavy, right? Um, you have a lot of different size crochet hooks, no problem. I would say start with a 3.5. If uh, I think that's a G, I think that's a G. Um, I feel like that's right in the middle size. And as you start hooking, you will realize, um, I think, right, and everybody's different. Some people don't, don't agree with the sentiment, but I feel like I tend to go for the same hook over and over. I'll probably use this hook and keep putting it in my jean jacket pocket until I lose it. And when I lose it, I might not even notice that I, that I lost it. I might just go for another hook. Um, and I'll probably use that one until I lose that one in the seat of the car or uh, down the side of a sofa at a hotel room. And then it's like, oh, uh, and then I just find another one. I always, have a, I always have a few around in some of the studio. And I pick up the one that's closest. Some people are very, very particular about the kind of hook that they're using because it's their special hook or their lucky hook or just like with clothing, right? I don't have that uh, built into my, my hardware, so I just use whatever's near me um, that works. And if it's not working, I'm going to put it down and I'm going to look for another hook. But whether I'm hooking something really thick or really thin, I'm probably going to reach for the same hook every time. So the whole idea that you need to invest in tons of hooks um, for different weights of yarn or for different widths of wool is just not true. It's absolutely not true. If what you have is working, don't be looking to buy number two, number three, number four, number, just use it. And if it fails you in, in whatever way, then start looking around, you know, get on Facebook, uh, get on a live stream like this and, and say, this is what happened. I'm using this, but it's ripping my strips in half. Well, your hook is probably too small if that's happening. The crook of your hook is too small. The head of your hook is too small or too sharp and it's ripping your um, strips in half as you're pulling them up and somebody will immediately whose experience will immediately say oh that's all that is you just need a bigger crook on your hook so if you're using crochet hooks go up a couple sizes if you're using rug hooks go up to a primitive or a coarse as they're called primitive and coarse are kind of the same very large head you know um, but you certainly don't need to um, to empty the bank account to buy a bunch of different supplies this craft just doesn't work like that. This is a thrift craft and it is fun and luxurious. If you have the money and you're comfortable uh, with get, getting lots of fun things, it is certainly as much fun to hoard your supplies in anticipation of actually doing some work as it is to actually do some work. We all know that story, don't we? Uh, um, sometimes you wanna hoard for a couple of weeks or a couple of years and then you finally start feeling like doing the thing, right? I think quilters, quilters have that too. Uh, and then you start the thing. But, you know, sometimes you're not ready to start the thing, but you still feel like you're making a step in the right direction if you keep buying supplies, right? We, believe me, we all know this. This is, this is human nature. And if it makes you feel good and you can afford it, it's great to have lots of supplies and lots of things to choose from. But at the end of the day, this is the craft that was done with a bent nail by the light of a fire you know, for a hundred years before we got better equipment. And some people still work with very primitive tools and get work that is just as lovely um, and, per and perfect looking as anybody else's. So, yeah, so don't overthink your supplies too, too much. Now you can see as I fill in my wavy lines, I'm kind of going with the lines. So I'm spending a bit of time here. And I do plan for the green to be the background. So I wanna be careful about that. I'm thinking I might want to actually change that up. And as with most of my designs, I have a I have a color palette that I want to I want to be using. Uh, I want to kind of lean into the colors that are in front of me and the colors that I gave you. But uh, it could well be that while I'm hooking something, that I make uh, different decisions about color placement. And you should too, right? You should too. If you're a very technical person, you're probably looking to me to see where she putting the dark green where she putting the light green um, so I, I hope that i'm helpful with that tonight but i have to say that's not really the style that i hook in when i know that i have an excessive amount of 
wool, which you do if you have this kit in front of you, you have enough to do at least two of the same design, if not three. So you are in a good position to make choices about colors. And you could say, you know what, I don't even want green on the ground. I want the ground to be all yellow. You're, you have enough material to do that. So you see how I've got my wavy line started here? I'm going to do this again so you can see a little bit better. So I filled in those waves a little bit. And I do want the background, I, I think I do want it to be green. So the next thing I'm going to do that makes sense to me, right? And if it's different for you, then ignore this next step. The next thing I want to do is kind of anchor the bottom here, right? In between the scallops. I'm going to probably do the scallops last. So I'm going to come tearing up here with my lighter green. And I want to fill in the grass because I do want to make a final decision. Yes, that's my final answer. I want to do that with this part of the composition. And until I see a little more green in, I'm not 100% sure that I am going to stick with the green. So let's come shooting over here. And I'm just going to come up this side of this. This is called a lamb's tongue motif. It's like this shape, like a lamb's tongue. This is a very old uh, decorative mo motif. It's uh, strongly associated with like, you know, colonial American decoration. Uh, it's a very folky motif. And we use it a lot in rug hooking. If you're a beginner, you're going to see this motif a lot. I'm literally, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're not talking about perfect lines with rug hooking, particularly with a primitive piece like this. If it's too perfect, you're going to look all manufactured. Maybe that's the way that you want to look. And, and, and if that is the case, no judgment, right? If you feel like, I want this line to be absolutely a perfect swirl around the lamb's tongue, then spend more time. Absolutely spend more time making it perfect. And if it means that you have to pull a few loops out to get there, then you do that. Because if this is going to drive you crazy and you know that, make sure that this is perfect, right? This is not going to, I'm not going to cry myself to sleep over any line, right? That's just not the way that I work. But I'm not very technical. I enjoy the creative part more than the te technical part. You might enjoy the technical part more. And you might say, whoa, 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 this is, this is going to upset me if it's not quite right. If you know that about yourself, that is a gift. And you should spend more time, if you feel like you made a mistake or it's not, if maybe you're looking at this part, this loop here and going, that one sticks out more than the others, right? I got to go back and take that one out and move it backward a bit. Then you should. I don't work like that. And I can tell you by the time I fill this line in here with the lamb's tongue, you're not going to see that little bump out. Everybody has to work in a way in which they honor um, their own sort, of, their own feelings, right? Feelings like I don't like it, I'm uncomfortable with it, I feel like it's imperfect, I feel like I could do better. Honor it. If your if your head is telling you that, listen to your head, right? Don't listen to me. Listen to your head, because there's more than one way to do this. I went around that sweep there. I think I'm kind of liking this. I think this is going to be a good color. Um, for what I mean to do. So I'm going to do a lot more green here. And it's going to beg the question, how am I going to fill in in between here? We're going to do that in a minute. I'm going to do that probably with the darker one. So the next thing I want to do logically for myself, the next logical thing for me, because this is the side of a hill in the pattern, right? This is the side of the hill. So that's done. I don't want to do uh, here yet. I think I do want to come up here though. I think I want to come up to this line here because I want to establish, I want to leave room for the willow, the sweep of the willow branches coming down. But I do want to establish this area. So let me hem that up a little bit with the greens. I'm going to come shooting up here. And again, there is no wrong order. There's absolutely no wrong order. I'm going to come up the side of the tree. Wish I could have some nice music playing in the background. You know, and in, in when I have used music in these, I remember once I used the Burl Ives song, the lollipop tree or whatever, and like, uh, yeah, I, I forget which uh, big, big music company uh, slapped a copyright thing on me the next day. It was no big deal. They just locked the video uh, and I had to remove the song. And I thought, seriously, it's, you know, not Burt Lar, it was Burl Ives. Um, but yeah, so I got to figure out what music is copyright free because I would love to have... You know, when I'm working, I typically have, um, if I don't have Barry Manilow playing, which I know I couldn't play in the background, then I typically have like some light classical music so that 
um, there's noise and there's a mood back there, but it, I'm not distracted by what I'm hearing. And I don't want to sing along, baby, you're a rich man. You know, I don't want it, to, it's not distracting me enough that um, I'm not focused on what I'm doing. So I'm going to have to look into that, particularly for nights like this when we're together doing some hook-ins. So I've got this little shape in here. I'm going to check that out some more. I think what I'm going to do now is I think I'm just going to come across here. I'm going to establish this line. Now, you don't need to do a, this with a Sharpie, but I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to want uh, my strips to end there. I will be adding pennies at the end. You might not want to add pennies, but I just want to give myself a visual for what I mean to do. You're not going to need to do that. I'm just doing that because I'm hooking with you live. So that is, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come across here. And I'm just defining my space. And I am thinking about where my pennies are going to go to. Now I'm second guessing myself. I'm definitely second guessing myself. So you know what? That came out. I'm going to wait and see where I want to put those pennies. So I'm going to hold on the sort of hem of the willows. Let's hold on that for the time being. Instead, I'm going to come up here. Do you, can you see how there's some empty space up here in between here? And then this is going to be some empty space too. I'm going to have the same issue here. Let me just kind of clean up some of this. I'm going to go back to that darker material here. Now, you have more than two greens. Right, you, you have more than two. You have at least two grassy greens and then you have some other in-between colors that are like um, mustards and the mustardy greens. This one's more toward a goldy green. You know, you can be plugging in more than two colors here if you want to, you absolutely can. But make sure, right, with the grass, that even though these are two different colors, they are very similar in tone. This one is a bit duller and darker and the other one is mintier and more pastel but they're not radically different, right? We're not talking about black and white. We're not talking about evergreen and mint green. These are quite similar um, tonally. So make sure that if you are using more than two colors, and this is a bit of a color conversation, so it's a bit tricky, um, be sure that you're plugging in similar colors or the grass could become very confusing because you know what? We're gonna have a pastel rainbow here we're going to have the movement in the trees, and at the end, we're going to have our lamb's tongues. So there is a lot of movement in this piece. You want to be sure that the one thing that reads really is this tree, and this part of the composition is anchoring that tree. So while it can be busy, and it, does, and it shouldn't be boring, I wouldn't make it so outrageous that it's like psychedelic, right? Although you might be, say, you might be sitting there plugging in, hooking, hooking with the chartreuse color. Right? You might be hooking, and if you are and you're thinking, whoa, I think this is what she said not to do. That is not what I said not to do. If it's looking good to you, keep going with it, and we'll, we can make a decision later. If the, you know, and it, color is a personal thing, isn't it? It might be, I like a lot of color, and not, not a lot of people do like a lot of color. It might be that you are hooking with the really bright, something like this, right? Something, this, it looks like yellow on the monitor, but it's an electric green. It's really green. So it might be that you've got that in your hand and you're thinking, well, I kind of love this. I really don't want to take this out. I'm kind of loving the vibe that it's giving. Absolutely leave it in. At the end of the project, when you look at your piece, if you look at it and you go, I can't even tell that that's a tree. I've got way too many colors in here. Then think about it. But whatever you, whatever you reached for, like instinctively as we got going, just stick with it for now. Just stay together, uh, stick with it for now, and just keep going. And you make, a decision, you make a decision at the end, right? We'll talk about color as we go. I'm going to come around here, and I'm leaving my tails up. Hope you can see me okay. I'm going to bring my light a little bit closer in. Super rainy day here. I don't know about you, but it's been a misery day, like a super, super uh, biblical type rain day. Um, not very welcoming for our visitors from the Netherlands, but if you have ever been to the Netherlands, you know it rains pretty much every day. Um, so it's like maybe it, maybe it's a cozy home feeling too. Um, yeah, it rains a heck of a lot more than it does on the west coast of the United States or in the UK. It's like the most the most rain. Uh, in the, in the Western world. It's under many uh, weather systems, so beautiful country, but my God, does it rain. 
So I'm making decisions now because you know I want to experiment with this. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave this where it is. I've got a loop underneath, right? I've got a string hanging down. There's a good chance I'm going to pull that and rip it out and see what happens. Try not to say a bad word if I do do that. But I think I'm going to leave that for now because I want to experiment with the pennies. And I have some of the grass in place. I'm pretty happy with that. I came shooting over here. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe I'll fill out this area. I think I'll do that. I think I'll, yeah, I think I'll fill that area out. Um, yeah, let's do that. So let me get some more green. Ooh, need some more tea. Diane says jazz groove radio would be nice. Oh, it would be nice. Oh, I love jazz, Diane. I love jazz. Oh, God, do I love jazz. Mm. I was just talking about that the other night because I went to see, do you know, Jamie Cullum, the... He's, he's a, I thought he was in his 20s. I guess he was 20 years ago. He's in, he's, I think he's 44 now. What a cool guy. What great music. Um, kind of popular music, but he does a lot of um, covers of older songs. And he does, he has a great cover of the song Everlasting Love, which I love. Um, he's got some, he covers some contemporary kind of rock songs too uh, by bands I don't like, but I really like his covers kind of thing. So the other night when I was seeing him in a concert, He's, I mean, he's primarily and originally a jazz musician, so he did a lot of, he went on some jazz benders. You know how when you, well, the band did, because it was a large, I think it was an eight-piece band. You know how when you hear um, jazz music sometimes, they go off on benders. And this is one of the things when I was a cabaret singer, when I played, I uh, usually played with a piano player, and I knew him well, and I still know him well and love him very much. Um, but sometimes I would play with jazz quartets or uh, jazz guitarists, and I'll tell you, I, I'm still not over the uh, trauma of that because when jazz musicians go off on benders, like for me, even on stage and standing in front of a microphone, it would be like, I'm sorry, are we still playing the same song? Is this Moon River? You know, because it, it, you, you go so far out sometimes. And back in the day, I think I'm going to do one more of the dark one here. Uh, back in the day, I used that used to really scare me because I performed a lot. But now that I'm getting older, when I hear like Jamie Cullum the other night, his band going off on a bender, I, 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 just, I just felt like I was swimming in it, you know, just sank right into it. Um, it's so evocative of the city, right? And that's one of the things I was thinking about, I guess, depending on where you're from. It brought me right back to, if you remember Billy Joel's early records, like 52nd Street, a lot of jazz, a lot of um, really, really top jazz tunes and um, songs with heavy jazz undertones in them. And, you know, I grew up listening to that and then going into Providence, which was my city, and, and hearing that kind of music playing over the speakers of the department store and going, wow, this is, this is the height of sophistication, isn't it? And, uh, and then, of course, with the whole Billy Joel thing, seeing like Christy Brinkley, this, this piece is getting really small, so I'm going to cut it. Um, it must be an end piece, and I'm going to put a fatter one in there. But seeing, hearing Billy Joel play all this, this jazz music and then seeing Christy Brinkley up on like every um, poster, you know, in the women's section, God, that was so exciting. That really was such a time. And it just reminds me of the city now. It's, it's all synonymous. It's like uh, jazz music, the city. Seeing if I have one. Yeah, I do. I have one more of those. Uh, man, I just love that. I just love that. And pennies. Someone was asking a question about pennies. Are they difficult to make? No, Sharon, they are so easy to make. They are so easy to make. I'm going to show you what we're going to get there in a few minutes. and I'm going to show you they are crazy. It's crazy how easy it is to make. I just pulled this one by accident. This one, again, it looks yellow on the monitor because I have some strong lights on us. Oh, Linda Ann, good to see you. Um, this is actually quite similar in real life. You're not going to believe me, but it's very similar to this color in real life. Y very different tones on the monitor, right? This is much brighter on the monitor, but in real life, these are quite close. So if it weren't under a light, I don't know that I'd be able to tell them apart. So I'm just going to come back to my greens, and I'm going to flesh out this line here. So I have my bottom part done. And you see I have some little um, holidays, little holes in here in between the lines. I'm going to fill those guys out too. Pennies are super easy to make. I also like Mozart. Um, when I put on when I put on music on Shopify and stuff, and if I want something like a soft classical, I usually say. Sometimes I say, you know, 
I'm not going to say her name because she's going to come on. But sometimes I'll, I'll say, you know who, can you uh, play some light classical? And she'll be like, yes, I'll give you a recipe for a pot roast. And then that really irritates me and triggers me. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm... So sometimes I have to be real specific and say, uh, you know who, could you play like Chopin? Or could you play um, like Arthur Fiedler, you know, in the Boston Pops, that kind of thing. And um, sometimes that's so nice. But for some reason, I don't know about you, but when I'm listening, particularly with her, as opposed to a playlist, you know, she'll play, it'll be like, she'll play like, you know, 20 Jamie Cullum songs. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's, it's like Meathead or some, uh, uh, Meatloaf or some, you know, something completely different and unexpected comes on. And, and I listen to it and, and sometimes I don't even realize that it's not, it's not the same artist. And I'm like, how, how did this, how did this get into the shuffle? You know, and I wonder what that's all about. That's a super irritating turn of events, particularly when it's something really grotesque. I, I mean, I happen to like Meatloaf. Uh, but sometimes something really grotesque comes on, and I'm like, really? This is definitely not what I was asking for. I'm into this little holiday here now. You see, I'm into this little how to how to hole here. I'm going to fill that in, and I'm still leaving my loops. I'm still leaving my ends on top. When I pull up, pull up a loop, and then I cut my end, right? And again, just to repeat, um, the only reason I do that is so I don't accidentally pull it out. It, there's no real reason, you know, even, even if you're doing a large piece um, and you've got lots of ends underneath, do you, do you think your feet are ever going to feel those little tails? They're really not. They're really not. Not with wool strips, you know, not with flat wool strips. The, the main reason for doing that is just best practice uh, so that you don't accidentally pull them out and, and get all upset and frustrated and reverse your work. And if you do, hey, you're going to notice it if you're pulling it out. It's not the end of the world. It's not knitting. I always say that because, I, you know, I tried knitting and I found it very frustrating. I was always screwing up. And when I pulled something out, it would be like, you know, hours of work. And it was very, um, I found it very, what's the word, discouraging. I found it very discouraging. And the, one of the main things about this craft, hooking, that I really love um, and think of often is the fact that it doesn't work like that. And if there's just one or two loops that I say to myself, nope, not good, I'll just pull those one or two loops out. And I'm not going to cry myself to sleep. It is absolutely um, a who cares, right? It's That's two seconds of work. It's a big who cares. Take a sip here and take stock of what I got going. All right, I'm real happy with that. I can see some more holidays under here, right? This is like, a, this is the technique I call like a dent, the dental pick, right? Sometimes when I do this with the latch hook, I call it searching for ticks. Gross. But this is more like, this reminds me of being at the dentist and she's got that metal thing, right? And she's like, look, searching for cavities. And I'm thinking, this is 2023. Do we not have a better way of doing this stuff than to, for you to take a metal tool to my, to my enamel? Um, but apparently not. At least not here in Connecticut. That's the way it's been. It's been done the same way since I was a kid. And it is really uh, scary. <laughs> There's so many people in this world who, who they're like, you know, I'm fine with going to the, the doctor. They can do anything to me at the doctor. It's the dentist that I'm really scared of. And I have to say, my, my dentist, dentist uh, Scott Pearl and his dad, right? But the Pearls it is the cutest name for dentists. Um, also, I trust them implicitly, and they are fantastic. But I still, it's the stuff that goes on there that gives me the heebie-jeebies, the sounds and the scrapes and everything. Now, if you can see, I'm up here to this loop. And I'm right up against this line, which I like very much. And I really like when I pulled up this loop, this is real specific conversation. When I pulled up this loop, I really like the way it's sitting against this line. I really like that. And I feel like if I cut this loop in half, it might not look exactly the same. So I'm going to break the rule and I'm going to cut it underneath. I'm going to cut the tail underneath. So did I pull my loop up? Right? It was just a little bit of a tail, but I did not pull my loop up with that one part because um, I just liked the way it looked. It was perfect the way it, it was, and I broke the rule. I broke the rule in a thoughtful way. I knew what I meant to do, and I made a decision based on how I wanted it to look. Yes, of course you can break the rules. Of course you can. You can and you should, but make sure that when you do, um, that, that it's for a reason. 
right? That it's for a reason. If you just break the rules left and right, you might end up with a sloppy looking piece. Make sure that you understand what you mean to do. Sometimes I don't um, leave the tail on top because there's too many tails on top in that little area. And I think it's starting to look like a ratty mess. Now, I'm back over here. I remember I left my tail under there, so I'm gonna cut that one out because I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm happy right now with what I'm seeing. And I make decisions as I go, right? It's that kind of a craft. You can pull things out as you go, but I'm also making decisions as I go. And yeah, when there's an area where, do you see this area here? I wanna see if I can get you in focus. You see how there's lots of little tails like right around here? It, this to me is when I say it's starting to look ratty, it's starting to look ratty. Like th this is okay, I'm okay with this, but do I want a few more tails right here? I don't. That to me is starting to look a little bit ratty. So I'm gonna leave that. And if I had to pull up any more stuff in that area, I would, I would leave the tail underneath, right? So that's, that's a me thing and maybe you have the same, that's a me. Um, maybe you have the same thing, but um, you have to make these decisions for yourself. And if it turns out that you say to yourself, I really don't like any tails. I notice all of them and they all drive me nuts. Well, then you're a tails, then you're a tails underneath person. And, and is that a bad thing? That's definitely not a bad thing. If you say to yourself, I just don't like the way any tails look on top. I feel like I look at my piece and I can see every one of them and it drives me nuts. Then, then leave all of your tails underneath. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that is, feels better to you, then that's what you need to do. Make good decisions that are for you, right? Don't worry about following the rules. Worry about what your piece looks like, uh, what's bothering you. Look at what's right, look at what's wrong, look at what's bothering you, and make common sense decisions about the way that you like it, not the way that a book says, not the way that a teacher says, the way that you like it. And if you are a technical person, like if you are much more of a technical person than a uh, creative person, then you're gonna often say, no, nope, I want it to be exactly like the book, that's, that's my comfort zone, then it has to be that way, right? And we respect that. But you, you respect yourself is my point. Right? We have to respect the way that we work, all of us. Now, I came right around there pretty well and you can see I defined this lamb's tongue, that's for later. So I'm over here now and I'm gonna come sweeping around here. Right? That's my next move, I'm gonna come sweeping around here and then I'm gonna come sweeping up here, and then I'm gonna hit this side of the hill. Right, that's gonna be my next, where'd my piece of paper go? It's gonna be my next move, right? Oop. Here. Coming up the slope, calling meatloaf meat. <laughs> Colleen, wasn't that awful? Wasn't that awful? Man, and I would do anything for love. Just kidding. Being, I'm being stupid now. Oh, Goretti, good to see you. Good to see you. Still at the beginning. We're going to be at the beginning for a while, I think. This could be a thing, depending on where you are. But Colleen, I do like Meatloaf a lot. I like those, you know, he's so theatrical, isn't he? He's so, um, his music is so dramatic. And I do. I love the theater. I love drama. I love his dramatic music. Just thinking to myself, um, he passed away, right? He's, he's gone now, I feel. I was like, gosh. Um, oh, you know what? I was just saying to myself, where is one of my needle nannies? Here's one right here. These needle nannies are these metal things that you can get online. Um, they have them on Amazon. They have them in some shops and stuff. They're for sewers. They have them in quilt stores. And you can see it's a very strong magnet. It's like, whoa. Uh, my car, I think my car just moved in the parking lot. So you stick it under there, and man, it's on there. And while my Hartman hook doesn't stick to it, right, because of the metals, my scissors do. So that's really nice to be able to move that little guy there and to just keep my scissors there. Because if I don't have a needle nanny um, around, yeah, my, my scissors can go to all kinds of places. And uh, yeah, and they're sharp. Have some more tea. Mm. Oh, gosh. All right, so I'm going to come shooting up the side now. I'm coming up here. You know what I was thinking about today? Um, I was thinking about time zones. And I think about this a lot because I know that some of you, I know I know um, many of you are on the East Coast because I know where most of you are. Uh, but I know some of you are on the West Coast and some of you are um, mountain time, central time. And I know some of you log on from other countries. And 
I'm just looking at this. You see how right here, I'm not a technical person, but you see how that's just not looking good? So I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to move over just a hair. Now, this is a circle piece. I'm going to make this into a circle piece tonight, but it might be that in the future, I'm not a big fan of circle pieces or demi pieces. I'm not a big fan of curves. So it might be that in the future, I come up with an idea for filling this, boxing this out and making a little cushion or a little mug rug. And I'm going to want to sweep up here and kind of lock this line in better. But for this moment, I want it to be as precise as it can be. And I know because we're not, because we're in a stream situation, I can't hear you shouting out, but maybe you're, sh maybe you have shouted out. If you're a beginner, are you hooking on the line, in the line, outside the line? Where, where is your hook hooking? I am hooking on the line, but you can hook on the line, inside the line or outside the line. Just make sure that you are consistent, right? If you are always hooking outside the line, just common sense, your piece is going to be a little bit um, stretched out, right? A little bit uh, swollen. If you are hooking inside the line, it could be that it shrinks a little bit. The design shrinks just a little bit. I try to hook as much on the line as I can. Just make sure you're consistent because if you're sometimes on the line, sometimes in the line, that could be a problem. I just noticed that that loop was a little bit outside the line. And while I'm not technical, I do want to set myself up for success. It was only two loops back. Oh, shoot. I was almost going right by the hill. Did you see that? You shouting out to me, stop. I'm going to, you know what, with borders like this, I could easily take this piece and turn and come up here. And then you see the kind of line that's going to leave me at the border right here. I prefer, for myself, I prefer with something like a border line, whether it's circular or square, I prefer to cut because I'm going to want to continue with the next color, the sky color. I'm going to want to go right into this hole and pull that color up and continue like this. I feel that if I, this is a personal choice, I feel that if I make a turn like this, it's going to leave a very irregular bend, like a dog leg, uh, here. And it's going to be very hard to pick up this continuation line and make it be smooth. Do you see what I mean? That's just kind of a, a common sense thing. But again, I'm not going to sort of, um, I'm not going to beat that, that sentiment to a pulp because this is a thrift craft. And it might be that you're thinking, oh, who cares if there's a little turn right there? It doesn't really make any difference, does it? If it doesn't make difference to you, then it doesn't make a difference, right? I'm just showing you some of the things that are going through my mind as I hook this piece. But it might be that you that you hit the override button in your mind and you say, nope, not a thing. I'm going to do it this way. And you keep going with the dog leg. Nothing wrong with that. So I can really clearly see the movement under the tree here, and I do like that. And I am going to finish off. I realize I came around this curve here. So when I'm when I'm arranging my pennies, when it becomes penny time, um, I might want to I, I might want to rethink that. But let's see how it goes. I, I always have faith in uh, the improvisation part of this craft. I have a lot of faith, uh, and I know that by the time I get to the penny part, the way that I improvise um, is going to make me happy because I'm going to make sure that I make choices that make me happy. I'm not going to I'm not going to work on a piece and then look at it and go, yeah, no, this is all like gar garbage. This is a bag of garbage, right? I'm not I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make choices that please me and please my eye and and uh, if it means sometimes taking some loops out, I'm down for that. Um, but I'm going to make sure that when I walk away from it, I'm pretty happy with it. And if you're not, you know, then it be it becomes that kind of a question. Um has this piece upset me so much that we will never be able to be friends? Like this is just, uh, I'm always going to have bad feelings about this. Then, then that's a piece that you need to put away. Like don't set it on fire and drive over it in the driveway. Just put it away, you know, for months or years, whatever it takes. And it might be looking with new eyes at another point in time that you think, well, it's just a color. It's just a small color change in this area would make everything right. It might be that you can see that better, right? It's just like fighting with someone, isn't it? You're all emotional and crazy in the moment, and then you go to sleep and you wake up and you think, why was I so crazy and emotional, right? It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's the same thing with crafts. It's the same thing. But when things are upsetting you, um, like this is upsetting me. You see how ratty I'm getting right here? I just, for me, I'm not a very OCD person, but you see all these little ends right here? 
That doesn't make me super happy. That does not make my heart sing. So I'm not going to pull the tail up on this next one. I'm going to pull it up as a loop. And that's my choice. So I got some, I already got some tails that are hanging out underneath and there's going to be more, right? Before the jig is up here, there's going to be more because this is, this is the way I roll. I know that that's, I'm looking at that and it's starting to irritate me seeing all those tails, all the little flat blunt ends. So I'm not going to do any more of that. I'm going to break the rule. I'm going to do it thoughtfully. And um, yeah, I'm going to agree to disagree with that rule. So I was thinking about time zones. And I was thinking, I, I'm going to start, um, maybe like start with once a month, running a show at, it sounds crazy, but like 10 o'clock p.m., uh, run a show from like 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for people who are in other time zones. So you can catch me live at different times because really, I mean, I'm always awake at 11 o'clock at night. It's, it's not like I'm an infant um, or an old crone just yet. So um, I'm leaving my tail under here too, right? For the same reason, that's that little patch that's starting to get on my nerves. So I'm, I'm leaving my tail under here. Um, so I'm going to be doing that soon. And I've got to figure out when the first instance will be. But I want people who are on the West Coast and in mountain time to be able to log on sometimes, right? I'm on the East Coast, so I can't do it like every time. But um, I want you to be able to log on at times where you feel fresh and it's a better time for you. Um, and I don't want it always to feel like it's the middle of the day, you know, the rooster is like, you know, out there ah, 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 and I'm starting to show and you're like, oh, it must be nice for the people on the East Coast. They've always, you know, got this cushy time slot. I'm really excited about running some shows that are at different times and I'm really excited to see if some different people um, log on. I'm going to pause for a second because you see what's happening here. As I follow the sweep, even though I'm kind of in line with the line, it's make it's getting I'm accidentally crossing over my Sharpie mark and it's getting too far over the line and I see a problem, right? And I see do, do I see this move this movement here? I do. I see this you see this change here from one to the next. I see that. I, I see that too, and that's bothering me. I'm gonna pull out a little bit further back, right? And this is what I mean about making decisions as you go. I'm just gonna move over a little bit earlier. And yeah, there is still a sort of jag. And it's going to be okay when I put the trunk in. But I feel like it's better to fix it than to keep going. Now I've kind of stretched out a little bit of my linen, so I'm being careful. You know, this is a grid. So when I move over even one square, sometimes you absolutely can tell that it's not exactly straight. And that is the nature of the craft. But we know that other loops are going to go in around the sides of it and it's going to look just fine. It's going to look just fine. And I'm twisting underneath as I go. My hands are twisting. This is something that my hands, my brain taught my hands. You know, my hands didn't know how to do this. If you're a beginner, my, my hands did not know how to do this. My brain taught my fingers what to do and over time, um, and it wasn't immediate, but over time, my, my hand started doing what my brain wanted it to do. And yeah, it wasn't immediate and it was frustrating and I twisted everything for a while. And then all of a sudden everything started working, right? It's so nice when everything works, but hardly ever happens right out of the gate. This might get too ratty for me. Let's see how this goes. You can see I've got one little holiday right here. That's what I'm concerned about right now. I think I might, you know, I'm, I'm such a, uh, I'm so persnickety about waste and stuff. I'm gonna see if I can just use that tiny piece there. Nope, too small. Hey, I tried. I hate wasting anything. This is so ratty right here. Okay, look at this. I'm going to have to pull some of this out. You see how ratty that looks? If that, if that kind of thing doesn't bother you, just ignore. But it does bother me. So I'm going to leave that, but I'm not going to put any more tails up there. I'll do like this. I'll fill this little guy in, and then I'm going to be thinking about that tree trunk. Boo, circles, I know it, right, Ryan? That's an absolute bummer. That is a bummer. Gentle curves. I like the gentle curves. I'm not a circle person at all. The circles that I like are the pennies, right? That's that's going to be the really strong. You know what? I have my needle nanny on, and I'm not even using her. Um, I'm going to take a sip, and I'm going to come back to this trunk. Remember, that was one of the places caught my eye at the beginning so I'm gonna go back to that trunk and I think my piece is going to be just about the right size for squeezing in there we'll see how that goes see if it works
Oh, yeah. Go in and out of um, love for tea. Sometimes it just tastes too mellow. Um, sometimes coffee tastes awful. Go through these weird phases. Today was a big, it was such a rainy day, it felt like a tea day somehow. So I'm coming, shooting up the trunk with my brown color. If you have this in front of you, you have, you have a brown color that is distinctly more brown than the others. If you want to use it for the trunk, do it. If you don't want to use it for the trunk and you're like, I'm going to go for grassy green or I'm going to go for citron yellow, do it. Do what you feel. As long as that trunk stands out a little bit against your, your background, and the background at this point is still, yes, the hill. I'm sorry, the hill goes like this, right? So actually, this loop, when I'm looking at it now, look what I did. This line goes like this. This, this came up a little too high. So I'm going to pull these two loops out under right? for the moment. I know, I know that material's under there, right? And it's at risk of getting pulled out. But I need my eye to be able to see this line a little bit better. I'll make a decision about this tiny area later, right? Because it's right on the edge. It's this area. You see what I mean? So that's fiddly. We'll make a decision about that later. You do whatever you want with your trunk. Just make sure that it stands out. I'm making a decision right now. Do I want to come around here? I don't. I don't think I do. I think I want to have a lot of yellows around here. So now I'm making the decision, how far up the trunk do I want to go? And I mean, I don't want to get looking like uh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts here. I want to be, uh, I think I either want to stop. I don't know. These are tough decisions. I think I'm going to stop here. Now, it might be for you that you're like, no, I want that sweep. I want that really pronounced sweep. Then you should do it. Then you should do it. For me, I feel like, and I could change my mind as we evolve the thing, but I feel like that's where I want to be. And now for me, I'm going to go to my yellows because I've been kind of waiting uh, to get to these yellows. I'm going to carry on. You know what? Nope. I am going to use, I'm going to use that bright yellow. I think I'm going to use one of my darker yellows, something like that. I've got a lot of yellows to choose. I think I'm going to use one of my darker ones because it will mimic the tree trunk a bit better. You know what I mean? So let me go for, I'm going to go for this one. Is that the one I want? See, making choices as I go, that's just, and I have more of this one. I'm also thinking, no, I don't want to do, ah, choices, choices. You know what I would like to do? No, that's the same color. This is part of it, isn't it? These tough decisions about, even when you have a kit. Oh, that's Teddy. Um, tough decisions about where to plug in your colors. I think I'm going to go for this one. This is kind of a dark one. I mean, it's not a brown. This is a gold. But I do want my darkest yellow in play at this point. Because I want it to continue this sweep. I want to make this line very pronounced. The way that the lines are drawn onto the backing for this pattern, you're, they're not exactly the width of a, of a strip. right? So you might have more strips. You, I, I don't think with this pattern I want to double up. I think I want to add more colors and changes, just like a weeping willow has all of these fine filigree branches, arms dangling down, right? Very poetic, very lacy. I want to capture that. So I don't want a bunch of big clunky lines. But it might be that you do, and it might be that you're thinking, okay, I want to fill in this whole piece all the same color no matter what. You can definitely do that, but for me, I'm going to do single strands coming down of all different kinds of yellow. And I'm going to have the thing at the bottom again where I'm thinking, where are my pennies going to fit into this? And do I want my pennies to sit on the surface of the loops or do I want them to actually be sewn to the bottom, like the hem of where the branches fall? That's something I'm going to have to decide in a minute because that's where we are with this. And it might be, I'm probably not going to do all the pennies tonight, right? Because that's a big, pro that's a totally different project. 
but I'll do one or two and sew them on so that you know what I'm doing. I'm not going to bring the tail up there just because of my thing in my head with the tails, but I'm at the end of that strip. And yeah, I'm deciding if it matters. I think it matters to me. I was deciding if it mattered whether I slightly changed the color. And for me, I think it does because I think the sort of prestige of this motif, the willow tree, is the sweeps, right? The sweeps down almost like hair, right? Cousin it, right? I think if I changed in the middle um, the color, that the stopping and the starting would be a bit jarring, if you know what I mean. That's how I feel looking at it while I'm doing my colors, but it might be that you feel differently. Now, I am here with Do I Keep Going? And I can see that this is gonna be tricky. I can see this is gonna be tricky. So this is the point, this is the point where I really need to take out my pennies. So if you're with me and you wanna start looking at pennies, I gave you only the smallest pennies, right? I gave you a bunch of just the smallest ones because this is a small pattern, right? So I'm gonna be thinking about what colors I wanna use. And we might all have slightly different colors. I don't want to use wildly different colors. Some of my pennies are multis, multicolored. Um, that one's a quite a quite good matchy match. I don't know if I want a matchy match. Some nice pink. Just checking out my pennies. And I'll probably do double pennies here. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Yeah, the dark ones are quite pretty too. Very dramatic. Huh. All right. Let's think this through. We're not going to be rash. We're not going to be animals here. We're going to make a good decision. So, you know, all right. Let's let's start with this. I can't stop. I can't stop. Okay. Let's stop. I really mean it. Let's stop. Um, all right. I got some pennies. Now, yeah, you have like 20 or more pennies in your thing, right? So I'm going to take away these guys because those are just a bit too bright for me. You could you choose your penny your penny combos. Um, I'm thinking about see I might want to even um, cut these pennies smaller. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So right now I'm deciding do I want pennies kind of embedded? I was thinking of having them at different heights. And, I, and I'm going to have to cut second ones. They're probably going to have to overlap a little bit, right? Because it's a very small pattern. Do I want them on the surface or do I want them stitched to the backing? Because if I want them stitched to the backing, now is the time for all good men. You see what I mean? I'm there. I don't know. I feel like when they're down on the backing, they might look too recessed, right? This guy is looking to me. I mean, he's a thick one too. He looks, he looks a little bit too far. I mean, in the thing is, if I'm putting them down, we're talking through this together, right? Because this is like, this is a decision. If I have my pennies down, let's look at one that's lighter down there, so maybe you can see it better. It fits in nice, but I would have to be thinking about putting all of the loops around it really perfect. I mean, I would be really hooking right up against it, and that's not impossible. That's not impossible at all, but also kind of like the way it looks with the penny sitting on top. You know, I don't, well, I kind of do. I kind of do like the penny sitting on top. And I feel like I'm gonna have more choices because I can overlap them and I can put them at different heights. So what I'm thinking now, right? And you could make it. You could you could come to a different um, conclusion than I am. I kind of want them all at the bottom of the tree. And I'm going to do different colors and stuff. I'm just playing. I, I like the height changes. I think I want to hook, and I think I want to attach them after I've hooked. I think I do. I think I want them to be bling after. Now, you might choose otherwise, and you might say, no, nope, I want to leave spaces, and I want to sew them right to the backing. And you can do that, 
But what I'm thinking in my mind is that this height difference from the tall loops to the low penny, even though the penny is going to be stacked, I think that's going to irritate me. Um, I know myself, right? And then the loops that I hook around right in here are going to have to be really perfect. Hey, are you at the door? Can you bring my orange scissors in? I'm such a pain, huh? Um, can you get my orange scissors, the one that say fabric on the handle? Um, yeah, I think, I think for myself I'm making that decision. This isn't impossible, but I would have to hook these little negative areas so exactly, right, that I don't know. I think I'd be really um, frustrated with them. Dawn, good to see you. Colleen said, I did a similar idea recently. I ended up hooking behind, uh, then sewing the shape over. It ended up looking stuffed, but put it at an even height to the loops. Okay, that sounds good, Colleen. And you know, you just, thank you so much. You just gave me another idea that you could be stacking them, right? You could be stacking them to, bringing them to bring them to the surface. But in my mind, I guess the thing about pennies is that they are stacked. Let's make a penny together. Like, let's make a penny together now. Um, they are stacked, and I feel like the height them stacking up, right, and getting higher and higher, that's important. If they're being stacked up and they're only coming to or almost to the height of the loops, I'm not sure that in my mind that's going to give me uh, the same feeling as pennies on a penny rug. So I'm making that decision for myself. You can certainly sew your pennies directly to the backing. Let me create a nice solid backing here. Oh, my penny ran away. My pen, that was my favorite penny too. So what I'm going to do, let me get out a needle. I'm going to, I'm going to do a penny here just as a sample, just so in my mind, I'm clear on what I'm doing. And I'm looking for a needle. Oh, I had these guys, didn't I? I'm looking, these are tapestry. Oh, these are both tapestry needles. So tapestry needles will work great for, these are wool pennies, right? Your pennies are hundred percent wool. Linda, good to see you. Um, could you use quillies? Absolutely, Don. You could totally use quillies. You could totally use quillies. Oh my gosh. You just reminded me. I found one of my quillies the other day. Where You know what? Hang on for a second. I got to leave for a second because that's a great thought. I want to show you the quilly in, in this project so that you know exactly what I mean. Give me two seconds. Do a little bathroom break. I'll be back in, in less than a minute. Okay, so we did, I did a, we, we were talking about quillies the other day. We've talked about them a few times on Coffee Time. So here's a quilly, right? This is one that fell off of the Magdalena rug. Um, let me bring it in focus. And so I made more because I couldn't, and you see the little knot going right through it? Yeah, that's a little knot. There's two little knots. But yeah, I just coiled up some wool strips, right? You can see it's maybe two colors here, or maybe it's an ombre. And then I just sewed right through it with the needle, just like this, right, right through. I did a video on quillies the other day. So for example, Dawn, great idea. This one even matches. If you have something like a quilly, right, it's already quite thick, right? You, would, you wouldn't make them this big for this project, but you could see how that would be fantastic, right? And if I did have quillies, they are actually taller than the loops. And it is very easy to hook right up to them. I did that with the Magdalena project that's hanging at the Hartford show right now, right? It's in the show, um, so I can't show you. But I, I butted them up right against, right? And then I hooked right around. Actually, you know what I did? You know what I did? I hooked around first, and then I squeezed it in, right? None of them fit exactly right. I had to really squeeze them in, like 10-pound sausage in a 5-pound sack, right? Just right in. But they all, they all squeezed in well because they were similar in size. So 
I actually, when I, ins when I inserted the quillies, I hooked around and then I just stuffed them into place and they look beautiful. If you've seen that piece, if I do say so myself, I think it looks beautiful. So yes, quillies would also work absolutely great for a project like this. Just a little bit smaller than this one, right? So you could have maybe two here and two here kind of thing. Absolutely, that would work. So I'm gonna put Quilly aside for now. Now I'm gonna use a tapestry needle because that's all I have at this moment in front of me. I, I've got these guys, this is like an antique whatever. Um, but yeah, nothing here is gonna really uh, do it. Well, this one, you know what, this one's gonna do it. I'm gonna go for this guy. Um, you could use a tapestry needle. You just have to make sure if you're using a tapestry needle that the material that you're trying to sew into is open enough and loose enough that you can get a tapestry needle into it because tapestry needles have dull tips, really dull tips. So that could be a problem. This has a nice sharp tip, right? This is lethal. This is almost like a doll's needle. It's so long, right? This, so this is more of an embroidery needle. It has a semi-large head. The only thing your needle needs to do is to be able to go through the material you're gonna sew. And also it needs to be able to accommodate the material that you're sewing with. In this case, this is some sock yarn I have. This is like a little bit of sock yarn. It was just in that bag. So let's see if I can get it through. Now this is the thing, isn't it? It's like I'm playing the Jeopardy theme in my head. There we go, you stinker. There we go, it worked. So the only thing the needle has to do again is, is accommodate the, the material you wanna put through it and sew through the penny, right? Other than that, if you have a bunch of needles, you don't have to go buy a specific kind of needle. Just make sure that your thread goes through there and that it's going to stab through your pennies. That's all it needs to do. I'm gonna do single ply and I'm gonna do, now I, had, I didn't practice this before this live stream. Typical Diana. I'm gonna do a double knot here just to be sure. I don't always do a knot because you do see a little knot. You see a little bump sometimes, but um, I'm going to make, I'm just going to make a sample penny, right? And I'm not really sure color-wise. I still haven't really made a good decision. I think I might do, I kind of like the dark, right? I kind of like the dark. My, my hands are so dirty. Um, this is like a black watch material. I might put that onto this. I think that's quite pretty, but you can see these are the same size. I have a Sizzix um, from Old Tattered Flag, I have a penny cut it, cutter, and it cuts three sizes, but this is the smallest size. And this piece I'm doing tonight is super small. So I'm going to, with my eye, trim out this guy so he's smaller. Is it going to be perfect because I'm doing him with my eye? Of course, he's not going to be anything like perfect. But if he's sort of circular, then he's probably going to be okay. Now, I could have a major uh, live disaster in a second because I forgot to practice the penny thing. And I haven't done pennies since I worked on that piece and finished the first book. And not only have I not worked on pennies, I have not even thought about pennies. And that is a good thing. So look what I did. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. It's, well, I was gonna say it's much too small, but maybe it's not much too small. It's definitely not a circle. So I absolutely butchered the little penny. Oh. But see, now you know the way I am. I'm gonna feel sad if I don't use this guy because I'm gonna be like, well, he gave up his life and now I'm not using him because I screwed up with the scissors. Let me see if I can use him. So let's see if I remember how to make a penny on a live stream, right, classic. I'm gonna come up underneath him and I've got a double knot here. You could have a single knot and you could actually do no knot. If you just hold it in place, you really don't have to have a knot. So I'm gonna come down here, right next to the penny. I do have a video on pennies. And I'm coming back. Oops, it came out of the needle's eye. Oh, you stinker. Yeah, it came out of the needle's eye, so that worked good. So I did like a U stitch. I do have a video on sewing pennies, right? So make sure that you're referring to that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rethread my needle, number one. What I'm going to do is, um, it's, a, it's called a blanket stitch um, or a, ba a basket stitch. It's the same stitch. And what I'm doing is I'm attaching these two together by stitching 
around the edge, right? So I don't know that I want to spend a lot of time doing this here tonight because I do have a video on this, but you see I'm putting the needle down right next to the last stitch. I'm trying to come in focus here. And then I come up and grab it underneath the loop. Oop, that one didn't go underneath, wait a minute. Oh, now it's, oh, see now, as if he wasn't small enough, I grabbed his little edge there. Boy, he's languishing, that little piece. And then I'm gonna go to the next. And it's probably the last one I'm gonna do here, and I'm gonna show you how I finish the edge, because that really is gonna matter. And again, I have a video on this. It's, ma it's the making the pennies for penny rugs video where I go through it ad nauseum. So I'm just attaching them together as I go with this little blanket stitch. Now let's leave, let's leave this for the second and let's come, wait a minute, to the edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the edge. Again, I'm just doing this quickly because I really want a hook. I, and it's not getting any earlier. Um, I really want a hook. We've got a lot more to go. I'm doing a single knot that time, and I'm just going to quickly show blanket stitch, and then we're going to get back to hooking. So coming around the edge like this, and again, knot or no knot. For the, the first one's always a little bit different, isn't it? Because um, it's, the first, it's the first one, and you've got nothing to attach to. So I'm pulling my thing up, but before it comes up, I go underneath it. And then I go equidistant apart. I'm sorry, it's not in super focus. Yep, so equidistant here. And I'm coming up again. And I come underneath. And it drags it over. And then I come up again. Now this guy wants to play. And just before it's too late, I get underneath and it drags it over and it lines up. Come on, focus. It lines up all these stitches along the top like this, right? Nice and flat. That's basket weave, um, also called uh, basket, sorry, basket stitch, also called buttonhole. I'll do one more now that we're in super close focus. Come on, focus. So I'm coming over here. You try to do it equidistant, but just like with hooking, you know, you, you don't want to get crazy. You don't want to drive yourself nuts. You don't want to take out a, a ruler, right? That's It's not that kind of a thing. And then I come up underneath it so it lies flat on top. Right? And come over to the next. Wow, these expensive cameras, huh? Come over to the next. And I catch it before. Teddy again, right? Teddy, Mama is doing a live show. I'll have to talk to you later. Okay, bye. Love you, baby. For the love of God, you know he's gonna keep. You know he's gonna keep calling. But anyway, basket stitch, buttonhole stitch, same thing. You're doing the stitch to attach the penny inside the other penny, and then you're doing it around the edge, right? And then I would sew this on as invisibly as possible. And again, I don't really want to go full blast pennies tonight. I really want to hook. Um, but you, it might be that you end up with quillies anyway. But I would, I would sever this tie. And once I'm all set and I've got it all sewn up, right, I would really invisibly attach it. And I do want to attach mine to the surface, not to the recesses. And I would just be coming up under carefully with the needle, right, finding a good place with a similar thread or with the same thread. And I'm just going to be looking to catch it. Do you see how I'm in between the stitches? That kind of a place. Or as close to the knot as possible. I'd be coming up somewhere like that right next to the knot. You see that needle? And I'm not attached now, but I'm going to come back down right around there where the knot is so that it's very hard to see. You see what I mean? Sharon says, I'll be in Vancouver in June. I'm Canadian, but I live in Australia. Where's a good place to get punching supplies? I know about a place in 
um, on the island, but I probably won't get there. Oh, interesting. I'm going to follow that. I'm going to follow that. All right, let's keep hooking. So now I've made the decision that I'm going to attach. I'm going to use my pennies and I'm going to cut a smaller one, right? It's going to be more regular than this one I do. I'm going to be more careful and I'm going to put it inside the others and I'm just going to choose color wise how I want them to lay. I might even trim down the larger ones. These might still be too large, but I'm going to use my circles and make decisions about how I want my pennies to fall in this. If I want pennies at all, um, because I might end up using quillies. Who knows? Let's keep going with the hooking. So I'm over here now and I have, because I know now that I want to attach um, my bling to the surface, that I'm not going to agonize anymore about, move him over there, uh, the bottom of the tree. I can just blaze through and do the bottom of the tree. So we're not going to worry about that part of it anymore. Making that decision to attach to the top of the loops eliminated that problem, didn't it? So one less thing to think about. Now, I'm just going with colors now, and I think I might, um, let's see, I'm going to switch colors. I want to kind of alternate my colors as I go. And now that I have this line in here, this is an important line to me because it picks up from the tree trunk. I think I'm going to come right next to it. I'm going to more or less ignore the drawn lines on my piece because, and I'm going to blaze now, right? Because I want to make some progress and I want to get to some other parts of this. I'm going to blaze. And if you're a beginner, you know, I'm saying I'm blazing. I'm going to, I don't expect a beginner to keep up with me when I'm doing stuff like this and I'm just making mileage. Um, the main thing in my mind now is not following the Sharpie lines. It's following that mustard colored line that I put in. Because that line comes from the tree trunk. To me, that's the most important uh, part of the top of the tree, right? Because it's a continuation. I want to stick with that line. And everything that I do is going to come off of that, that first mustard colored line. If I start with something in a different area, my strips might not meet up. So I'm going to hug my hooking right against that first line, right? I hope that makes sense. And I'm right at the end, and I'm not going to pull the tail through here because the loops are lining up nicely. And I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to move to the next, um, the next row. And I want to be careful. I want to use different colors. I'm going to stick with yellows for myself for this. You might be getting into different colors. You might want the tree to look like a rainbow as well. And if you do, then go, go crazy with colors because you can make this pattern work in a way that this these lines echo this rainbow line, right? And there, that's absolutely fine. That's going to work. But for me, I have wanted like kind of this yellowy tree. That's what's been in my mind um, ever since the winter. I was thinking about doing this yellowy colored willow tree. Also because it's unexpected. You know, we're used to seeing willow as a china pattern in blues. Um, and it's, I think it's just unexpected in a completely different color. So I'm going for the yellow, but you do... Uh, what makes sense for you. And I'm being careful when I come around these sweeps because I want the loops to be a similar height. This guy's getting hidden under there. Just making sure that they're all standing up nicely because I want, this is a pattern, right? This is a pattern, this whole, yep, I'm going to cut this one underneath too because I feel like that one came up good too. Um, this is creating a pattern, the, the striping in this tree. And I want it to be, because there's a lot of color change, I want to be careful about uh, maintaining the pattern. You can see here, I'm keeping my tails under here. I'm going to come sweeping around again. I, it's not like I'm trying to go dark light, dark light. In fact, I feel like I am doing that, so I'm going to switch. And let me pull something else. Um, let's see. You know, I'm going to go for this one. This is more of a peach because that's still well within, you know, these are yellows and soft oranges. So let me try the peach. And I'm going to kind of sweep this around. And it might be that this line of peach does not butt up against the green, right? Because um, the strips aren't exactly the right height. If I might have a little holiday. And if I do have a little holiday, which is a little gap, I'm going to get out the green and fix it. Because what I know for sure is the sweep of the tree is correct, right? Because I've got the lines right up against each other. Now here, I am going to leave a tail because that makes sense. And let's see what we've got on the underside of this. I have a little holiday right here. 
right? There's the cavity. So I'm going to get my green and I'm going to shore that up right now before that has time to trigger any bad feelings. I'm going to pull the tail up on the side here, get it flat against my sweep. And it's only going to be one or two loops. That's going to do it. One loop, two, no, that was the same hole. One loop, oh, two loops. I think that's going to do it, right? It's even a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. I'm fooling with my loops and I am not, um, I'm not a real particular person and I'm not a super, oh, there's a little ladybug. Oh, look at, there's a little ladybug. I don't know if you can see her. Tiny little thing. Come here, honey. Let's get her off right now. Let me get her off here. Tiny little thing. Come here, you little one. There she goes. She's up on my finger. A little sweetheart. Come here. There you go. I'm not going to make you go away. Ladybugs are okay, right? They don't do anything bad. All right, so I think I'm, I think I'm going to cut underneath again here because I'm kind of liking, I like the way that this is swept. I'm going to move this tail over here. Yeah, I kind of like it just the way it is. And I'm afraid if I put another tail in there that I'm going to get ratty, right? So I'm going to cut because you see the rattiness is, is encroaching. It, and I, again, I have a, my ratty radar um, is quite high. I feel like this area right here, you know, it's possible rattiness right here. For me, I know in the grand scheme of things, it ain't going to matter, but I don't want to add any more tails. So I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to cut that green tail. Now, if you're, if you're keeping track of how many tails I've got underneath, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. Um, and it, it's going to be more. So I'm going to finish this off here. Now, this was my primary line, wasn't it? This mustard colored line. So I'm not going to do all the same heights though, right? I don't want a cousin it. I want it to be like... Uh, sort of natural looking. So I'm going to pull up, make sure I'm over a little bit. I don't want to be right on top of that last line. And I'm going to start my next sort of revolution. I'm just echoing that mustard line. Cooking with steam, man. Cooking with steam. And yeah, you know, it's, it's a personal choice thing, but for me, color-wise with this, I don't think I would want to do dark light, dark light, dark light for me because um, I feel like it would be a bit too matchy matchy and predictable. So yeah, I think I'm headed more toward with so many colors to choose from. Uh, I, I like, a, I like, I'm putting a wide variety of color together here, but you see what's going to happen here. This is what I like about this pattern. I'm giving myself all kinds of compliments tonight, aren't I? I'm going to show you in a second. Let me just get to the edge of that come here. I'm going to show you what I like about this pattern. Sometimes when I do something clever, I'm just so astonished. I have to um, I have to make sure everybody knows knows about it. These scissors are actually sharper. So what I like about this pattern is this line here, right? And this is a continuation of this line, comes up like this, but this line is the primary line on this side, and it, it ends right here. It ends right there. So you see how it's almost like they're shooting off in different directions? Right? They're not coming to a part like it's hair. They're, this one's going to sweep off there. So because this line ends right here, uh, Linda and Kim, what other? Oh, okay, that's the Canada talk. Um, because that line ends right here, I'm going to want to put this line in next. And so this one's done. And I know I have another one to do here, at least one more, right? But I think I'm concerned about this next, this outer one, because it stops right in between this tail and this line. So I got to think about what color I want that to be. Um, I really want it to stand out. I think I'm going to do the chartreuse color. And there is no, excuse me, there's no right choice, right? There's no right choice. You pick up a color and you say to yourself, yep, that looks good. Then that's the color, isn't it? And if you start hooking it and you think, nope, doesn't look good, or you drop in the sky in a few minutes and you're thinking, nope, does not stand out enough against the sky, then you know that you have to change it. But for this moment, I don't have the sky in. I only have the tree in. I like the way it's working against the other colors on the other side of the tree. So let's see how this goes. Come shooting around the corner here. I'm in an awkward position with the camera hooking this way. Let me see if I can... I'm just going to do this for a minute. I hope that's okay for you. 
uh, it's hard to hook when I'm all like I'm a contortionist here at the table and man that rain is still coming down like it is the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine you know that song I still like REM I have to admit sometimes I tell that person that plays the music uh, to play some songs by REM because it brings me right back to the 80s and going to all the dances and yeah those are some good songs sometimes I don't like the singer and it's hard to separate the singer from the song or the memory you know because I know too much now that I'm a grown-up and I and I have firm dislikes and stuff um, not that I think not that I strongly dislike Michael Stipe but yeah he's not he's not my my all-time fave good song though so I came up with my tail right here. There's no, uh, there's no rattiness here yet. I haven't had a chance to make it ratty yet. Give me a minute, right? Uh, and I will. But I haven't had a chance to do anything with rattiness. So I've got my tails there, and I, I pulled up on a tail and ended on a tail, and I went into exactly the same hole to start the next one. So I brought up the other tail. So what I mean is that in this spot here, this place is actually two tails. It's a character from Sonic, right? But it's also, um, they're coming up out of the same hole. Because I figured two tails pretty much equals one um, loop, right? For all intents and purposes, it kind of equals one loop. And if you feel like putting, I, if I leave a tail up, I start the next tail in the same hole. I always do that. Is it a hard and fast rule? Well, nothing's a hard and fast rule, is it? But that's what I do. And I, and I like it that way. So you decide, you know, um, if you like it that way, or you might say, nope, looks ratty. I don't want that. So that's absolutely a choice and you can leave all of the tails underneath. So now I've got this line in it. It's quite important because that line connected to that. It's almost like a puzzle, right? Where you connect two parts and you're like, okay, um, now we're cooking that kind of thing. I'm going to put in the mustard now. And while there is not truly uh, an order to rug hooking, right? You can start in the middle, you can start at the top, you can start at the border. With some patterns, like I'm finding with this one, I, I didn't I didn't realize this until I started hooking it. It does have a sensible uh, chronology for me as far as what to hook for a second, third. For me, it does. And it doesn't mean that for you, it also does. It doesn't mean that you're missing anything either. It just means for me, I'm really concerned with the way these lines meet up here. I'm really concerned that it looks natural and that there's good color changes uh, and that it's dynamic. So with that in mind, I'm making choices based on that. Uh, and, and all of my thoughts right now, you know, I'm going to fill in around here, but all my thoughts right now are making sure that the lines of the tree are colorful, that there's some good color changes, that it's bright and pretty and cheerful. And that's the, that's where my head is at right now. I've got this dark mustard here too. You've got at least one mustard in your um, kit, if you have the kit. And if you have been following along with me, I'm not gonna put any more tails up because I'm getting too triggered with tails. I'm keeping them underneath now. When I see, I'm so close to my piece right now, the way that I'm sitting, I'm so close to it that everything is kind of amplified. Um, and I know when I get into that mindset that I really have to honor what the games that my head is playing, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the least important stuff in the world, you know, oh, are there too many tails, right? It's just the way that it goes uh, when I get into that head space. So, and I pulled up that loop completely in the wrong direction. So let's come over here. Only part of this composition um, requires really serious thoughtfulness and attention and decision making only part of it does in huge part this pattern is a hit or miss pattern isn't it because in terms of color for the grass for the tree itself you'll find for the rainbow as well uh, in huge part this pattern um, really lends itself to a hit or miss style you can go in here and say, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to drop a bunch of colors in. And you should. This pattern lends itself to that. You can even eliminate the rainbow and put another lamb's tongue or two more lamb's tongue if you prefer that. Um, this is very, very open to, um, to play, right? This is a pattern you can easily play with. 
I'm hooking it the way that my my head is is liking it. You make it the way you you make yours the way that you like it. And if you and if you're worried about uh, straying too far from the path and you're sticking with me, great. And then I hope you like that your color choices because because I'm basing them on my taste and I hope that you like them too. But you do know you can always take them out later if you say too much yellow in the tree. I don't want that much yellow in my tree. And you switch out some colors and then you you know put some lilac colors in or some browns or some blues or there's some orange in your pack, you can put any of those colors in. Again, it's up to you. If your tree looks wild, your grass looks wild, your rainbow looks wild, and your lamb's tongues look wild, and you look at all that wildness and you say, I love it, then you're good. Then you're good. Then conversations about color theory and color placement are honestly absolutely pointless because the only thing that matters is that you like it. Now... Again, I'm sticking with the primary line for this half of the tree was the top arc, wasn't it? So I'm just continuing on, making good decisions as I go, I hope. It's very hard. Ryan knows this. Circles are a bummer. So these are arcs, right? These aren't circles, but we're still working. It's, it's very curved, isn't it? Uh, and it's a bummer. It's hard to get it just right. It's hard to get all the loops butted right up against each other. Um, you see that I occasionally just yank out one loop and, and get a little bit closer, a little bit further away. Just do the best you can. When all the loops are in and they're all touching each other and supporting each other, you're going to see it works great. And you can always add some loops later. You can always pull out one little row or one little part of a row later and fix it. Right? If, if when you're done you're thinking, no, that part still is upsetting me, then you fix it later. But... Try to get some, um, try to get, uh, that was a tail, I'm going to leave that. Try to get some momentum, try to get some speed up. And you no, know, don't worry about keeping up with me, but just um, get to a place in your mind that I'm about to finish this part of the tree, right? Get to a place in your mind where you look at it and you say, yeah, I'm not quite finished with that, but I know exactly what I mean to do next. So I'm good, I'm good. I'm at that uh, good jumping off point. That's the only thing that matters. So I'm going to put a couple more colors in here. And again, making choices as I go. So yeah, so I'm thinking about a back to the time zone thing. I'm thinking about that. Do I want to run a regular show at a, at a later time? I know for people on the East Coast, that's quite late. Uh, but for people everywhere else, it's still early. Um, you know, and yeah. I think it will be fun to, to, to do some different stuff at different times because I want um, people who are, who are in other time zones to be able to participate live and have fun too, even if it's not as often. You know, I, Because I am where I am, I do stuff that makes sense with me, and obviously I have kids who are still young, and uh, that is its own uh, hornet's nest. But um, yeah, but there are times when I can break away and we can... Uh, be crazy and do stuff a little bit later, you know, and, and maybe um, maybe that's fun to stretch a little bit that way. And, and it, it adds a different kind of dynamic with different people commenting and asking different questions. It puts a different kind of flavor. Um, I think it's a nice I think it's a nice idea. I'm definitely going to do that. Definitely going to do that. Now, that's my last. I'm going to bring up this tail. That's that tail. I think I'm going to do uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do one more round here, right? I like the way it's coming out. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, I'm reluctant. I'm reluctant to say it. I'm going to say it. It, re it reminds me of the golden arches, right? Like McDonald's. Um, is it because I'm hungry? <laughs> or is it because it looks like the McDonald's thing? See, this is another one of these stupid things that until you do it, you don't know. I'm okay with that because I'm going to say it. I quite like McDonald's. I do. I quite like it. It's probably my it's probably my least favorite of the of the fast food chains. We are we are Wendy's people, that's for sure. And KFC, we like the KFC too. Uh, but yeah, you, you won't you won't often hear me saying anything. I like to eat healthy. I do, and I'm trying to lose weight. I really am. I really am. Um, I just feel better about myself, and my clothes fit better, and I'm not spending a lot of time picking and pulling at the waist on stuff because I feel like it's you know stuck in between rolls of lard, uh, I feel better when that stuff isn't on my mind. So I am working on it. But man, once in a while, that kind of grotesque fast food 
really hits the spot. Really bad. It's really bad, I know. All right, now it's going to be the last one here, and that is going to finish off the branches on the tree. And I can't help it. I can't help it. It's so late. Man, we didn't get far at all. I'm going to keep going. I'm just revisiting this and thinking, yeah, I might want to clip these a little bit smaller, right? But I can see putting a couple. I think I might put a couple on each side. I think I might do that in the end. And I might cut them just a little bit smaller with the center piece in there, too. Just kind of feeling it out. We'll see. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe the same height. Oh, gosh, now I'm confused. I don't know. I'm going to fool with that more toward the end, right? And not of the episode, just when I'm done, done. So I got holidays. I got holidays, and I'm going to fill them in. So I'm up here now. And I don't think I'm going to leave the tail because I have a couple of starts right there. Um, yeah, you know, the tail, obviously, when you're working in a primitive cut. Oh, I forgot. That's the... That's the sky. Remember, that's the sky. Okay. So let me come back here. Hang on. I'm trimming. I have a loop in the back because I, I screwed that up. Remember, that needs to be more blue. So I want to stick with this little curve. This is the grass curve. I am going to leave that tail there. I'm going to be right here for a minute. I know you're upside down, but I'll come back to you. Do this. I'm going to trim again. No tails around there, so that's good. And a little more here. I'm not going to pull the tail up there because there's another tail. I'm going to give that a little bit of a break. And I'm upside down for you just for a minute because I want to speed up a little bit too. So I'm sweeping down here, down the side of the tree. Oh, I gotta do this side of the tree, right? I gotta, I gotta do one more there too. So I'll do that. Oh, uh oh. Yep. If I'm gonna do one more there, I'm gonna want one more on this side too. Remember this one? I forgot to do. Let me do that. Let me do that. So let me pull this out a little bit. Let me add one more. Let me add one more round. When you leave your tails underneath, Jean says, do you do anything special to them when you finish the piece? Um, no, I don't. I don't. Um, I just leave them the way that they are. So, no. Um, I'm trying to think about on like an actual rug as opposed to a wall piece, whether I would do anything different there, and I don't think so. I mean, I don't allow for really long tails because um, I think that's just tempting fate, right? It's the same kind of stance that I take with um, punch needle. I don't always, sorry, Ryan, I shouldn't say this out loud because I know this is like, a, like a blasphemy, but I don't always pull all of the tails back through. Um, sometimes if I packed too much in an area, I'm like, all right, those tails are staying on the wrong side. But for me, I'm always considering what's happening to it next. Because of the speed I work at, because of the, the nature you know, of doing this for a business, I, I know most things that I make are going to go into a Tupperware thing with a lid on, and I probably won't take them out uh, in this decade, Like on, if I'm honest. So I don't think about them too, too much. But when I do have something up on the wall, like the stuff that's up for Hartford, I make sure that it is tidy in the back. And I guess for all of us, tidy it has a different definition. I don't want to feel like I'm being irresponsible with tails in the back of a punched piece or a hooked piece. Um, but I do feel like when a piece is done, I'm just making a decision about this color now. I don't think I want, I was going to do this again, but I don't think I want to because that connects. I think I'm going to do the apricot color again. Um, oh, or the white. You know what? Maybe I'll do the white. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this color. But hang on. I'm going to continue that thought. Just looking. Hmm. Oh, decisions, decisions. Hang on. Yeah, I'm going to do the light color. Um, yeah, I, I make, all the decisions I make about finishing are, are common sense decisions. 
um, and it's different every, because it's I, I do common sense decisions, not by the book decisions. I'm rarely thinking about what the rules of finishing are or what the rules of tail, tails are. I'm just trying to decide if that's too close in color. I think we're okay with that. Um, so yeah, I just make a common sense decision about uh, trimming my tails. I don't want to trim them so uh, short that they might disappear back through, right? That would be absolutely the worst thing I could do, but I don't want to leave them so long that if my hand accidentally touches them, it's going to pull a bunch out again once I'm all done and dusted, you know? Um, so no, I just leave them there. I leave them there to rot for the most part. That's what I do. All right, so this should be the last row for the tree. Now, do you see how on the edge here, as I finish this one, right, I'm not going to pull that tail up. I'm going to keep it down there. Let me, um, is that the same color? Let me fill some of this in. Hang on. Sometimes when I'm at the edge of something, I just have to concentrate for a second because I'm, I don't have enough brain power, you know, to think and talk. Okay, that's a tail. I'm going to leave that. So just one more little, one more little stretch. And I think we're going to be done here. Now there's a gap here. Do you see that? So I'm going to show you this is a good this is going to be a good tip for beginners and it's going to be a good reminder for everybody and i know a lot of you are seasoned buddies and you got this and you don't need tips from me and um yeah this is going to be a beginner tip coming at you so that's it for the tree right that's it i'm going to finish the bottoms this is worrying right this is a proper holiday you see this line here and you know when i take out my green I look at it and I think, well, that ain't going to fit, is it? That's not white enough for this, right? That's not going to happen. If I force that in there, it's the direction is going to look bad, right? Because it's going to go all sideways to pull those loops up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut this piece. That's the only thing I can do, right? So I'm going to cut it to like half the size. It's going to make it one different row, but it's going to fill in the space. And just because this kit is made up of number eights, doesn't mean that you can't cut them in half. If it makes sense to cut them in half, then you really have to cut them in half, right? There's nothing wrong with taking a scissors to your to your kit. You have to do common sense things, right? This is common sense. So I'm cutting him right in half. And I could cut him two thirds or whatever, but I think it's a very small gap. So let's see how we make out here. Come right in there with my dental pick. And, oop, same hole. I want to continue, well, while this is, well, this is not, directional hooking is not the first thing on my mind with this piece. But while, having said that, and while that is the case, I do care about this kind of sweep, right? I keep using the word sweep. There is kind of a rainbow sweep to the cousin it hair on the willow tree. And it, because that's the case, I want to keep going with that. I don't want to create a line of hooking that um, um, stops that flow, right? Because that, for me, could be uh, a bit dangerous to the overall look of the piece, right? These are things, if you're a beginner, these are the, I think that's far enough because now I can continue with the green. And now I'm wondering, oh, no, actually, God, good thing I stopped there. I almost did it again, right? Because that's the end of the green. Good Lord. I got to put the sky in before I do that again. If you're a beginner and you're wondering, how do you figure these things out? It's just practice, isn't it? It's all just practice. So you will figure, you will figure out all these kinds of things. I'm just looking at, let's see, I'm going to fill this in over here. You will figure all this stuff out for yourself. And over time, as you encounter each project, right, is going to bring a different set of circumstances. Uh, I don't even want to say problems because these are not problems, are they? Whether my tail is up or down, not problems. But every project is going to force upon you a different set of decisions. And the more experience you have with messing around rug hooking, um, the better you're going to be at solving these, at making these decisions. I'm not, I refuse to say the P word. You're going to become more and more experienced at making decisions and you know why? because you're gonna be more confident. With every project you do, with every loop that you pull up, you are gonna become more confident. And the only thing that you need to do this craft is confidence, right? Because it's not, as you can tell, it's not a difficult craft. You just have to have faith in yourself. 
believe that you are making good decisions and try to remind yourself of, of little things like my strip is too big. Yeah, I'm going to cut it in half. Just remind yourself about uh, stuff like that because um, those are the little things that you come up against that can, can be troubling and worrying and frustrating and, um, you know, pose problems and put you at weird junctures where you're thinking, yeah, I have to make a decision. How do I figure this one out, right? So the more that you have in your bag of tricks because the more experience you have, the easier and breezier it is and the more confident you are. And you find that you just instinctively say, all right, well, that ain't going to work, so I'm going to do this. And, and if you're thinking, oh, I've never been good at, like, flying by the seat of my pants. I'm never going to be good at that kind of uh, decision making. You're wrong. I, I'm going to I'm going to argue with you and say you're wrong. You will. It just takes a little bit of experience. And if you have experience already doing other crafts like cross stitch or quilting or whatever, you don't you haven't come against the same um, little little problems. Right. I said it. You haven't come against the exact same ones, but you have come to crossroads where you have to do some problem solving. And the more crafts that you've done, right, the more creative stuff that in general that you've done, the more, the more, the, the more you can relate to that sentiment. And, um, and as you do come up against things in rug hooking, like I run out of this material, uh, this hole is too small for what I'm trying to do. Uh, I screwed up this color. Can I balance it on the other side? There's a hundred million, million Brazilian things. Um, the more experience you have, the more you're going to realize that you can solve these problems very, very easily. Sometimes you need to sleep on it. Sometimes you need to sleep on it for six months, um, but you will solve these little problems. Oh no, wait a minute. Is there a little bit of green? Oh, I did it again. I did it again. Do you see that? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This line is coming. Mm. Yeah, that's tricky, isn't it? I need to put the blue in there, but I feel like I need... Yeah, let's do this. Hang on. I need a little bit right here, right? Let me come in here. This tricky. This can be tricky for you if you're doing this pattern to get that line just right. You, your, our eye is going to tell us when we have the sky in if it's too much. If it is, we'll just pull back one loop. But let's leave that there for the time being. So grass done. Grass done. And let's move to sky. Um, no, let's move to rainbow. I'm going to move to rainbow. So I realized while we were hooking that I did some dingity dong stuff and I have a lot of this as wool. Remember I showed you? Not all of it is cut. So that's awesome. So I'm going to have to cut a little as I go, right? This is me being confident. I'm going to make a little rainbow here and I'm going to start with my most pinky color, but not all my wool is cut. So sorry about the stupidity. What do you do when this happens? Or what do you do when you're cutter is across the room and your show is on and you got a cat on your lap and a rug frame well you just take out your scissors and go for it right because yeah i'm cutting this strip is it is it perfect it's definitely not perfect but you think you're gonna be able to tell when i hook it up it's a huge who cares so maybe i'll start down here with the later one and let's see i'm gonna come shooting up here i'm gonna make a decision about how many um Sorry, that was a concentrating moment for me. You know, I actually think I cut that a little bit bigger and I kind of like it. Right, this is me concentrating and the dog is out there barking. Yeah, I kind of like this actually. I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna, you know how rainbows go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, or thereabouts. I know they say different things in school now. Um, I think cyan is in there. I didn't even know what color cyan was until my kids told me, you know. Um, I mean, I did years ago, like in art class, but then it's like, yeah, I don't know. That was never part of our rainbow back in the day. But um, things change. So I'm going, I'm doing my rainbow, um, sort of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. But, I'm, but it, I don't have red in this rainbow. So in terms of values, I'm starting with my pinkies and I'm moving... And I think I will. I think I will punch a little bit of this later, just to show. Um, and it's not. It's not what you've got in your kit, you know, or any of that. But I think just to show variety, I'll do that in a little. In a little while, I'll do some lamb. Maybe I'll do the lamb's tongues punched. Maybe I'll do that. So I'm just looking at my stuff, and I'm making a decision. I've got really pale colors, um, and I'm just making decisions about what colors I want, in what order, because I still want to go, kind of red, orange, blue. 
purple and so on. So I'm rootling and looking for, I think I'm gonna do uh, full blast orange next. I know on the monitor it looks a little bit um, rusty, rusty, but it's actually orange. It's like Halloween orange. So let me see. I'm cutting again and it's, I'm right on the edge here. So I might have to cut the edge too because it's, it's going to look ratty. You know what I mean? It's right at the edge of where the rip is. So let me cut this a little bit. It's good to improvise, right? If there's one thing that I am, um, besides being a ding dong, it's confident. Sometimes I'm so overconfident uh, that I'm a jerk, you know? So let's see. See that there's some comments. I'm going to read those in a second. I just want to make sure that this is all set. Oh, I'm looking at this as a nice yellow too. I might want to put that in. That's a little different than the mustard that I was using. I forgot about that because we were sitting on it, literally sitting on it. Um, Sharon says, Kim, there's a store. Oh, okay. Oh, good. You're talking about um, the trip from Australia to Canada. That is exciting. All right, let's go. Let me find that. I'm just playing with the pennies again. I think I am going to like that, really. All right. Let's go. Next strip up. So I'm coming right here. Now, I'm not going to start over here, am I? For the same reason that I didn't do that with the tree. It would be, I, I feel, a colossal mistake because um, we might not meet up well and I'd end up cutting something small like that. Now, doesn't that look fine? That's fine. That was a good solution to the problem. But I don't want to do that on purpose. You know, I, the next, the thing that makes sense is for me to move right next to this kind of just kind of a lilac or a hydrangea color that I've got the first one. And now I've moved right to this bright orange. And yeah, is it the same value? No, the orange is much uh, more intense and brighter. It is like a Halloween, like a pumpkin orange, uh, minus too much yellow. But yeah, it's not the same value, but I like them together because what am I thinking about when I'm doing my color planning? I'm thinking about dark, light, dull, bright. Dark, light, dull, bright. When you have those colors together, you are in harmony. It doesn't mean that every single piece you do has to have dark, light, dull, bright. It might be you're working on a piece with flowers or whatever, an animal, and you're like, well, hey, I like my Wedgwood blue and I like my dusty rose and I really don't want any other colors in there. Maybe a little bit of yellow. I don't really want any colors. Do I have to have dark, light, dull, bright? No, of course you don't. You, you should make it exactly the way that you want it. We only lean on the color wheel when, you know, when we really want to be specific or perfect or when we're having a problem and we're a bit stuck, right? And then you start looking at what your tools are for colors, uh, how you can make a good decision. You need another opinion. Maybe there's no one there to help you. So you start looking at the color wheel or you go to the paint store and you try to get help with that, right? Uh, it doesn't mean you're not confident. It means you're trying to you're trying to figure out what your options are. But in general, like in my mind, when you're working on a piece, if you like the way that it is coming out, then you are good. You are good. You don't need me to tell you that you need another dark in there to go with your dull and your light and your bright. This one is one of the colors in the tree, but I think it's gonna, I think I'm gonna use it. And because, do you see how when I cut these, because of my mistake, they're a little bit wider. I think I'm gonna, even though I have more strips of this antique gold, and I actually do think that this is Cushing antique gold, could be gold nugget, but I think it might be antique gold. I had a bunch of golds that I that I dyed. You don't have exactly the same colors as mine. Some of them are, um, but my yellows are actually from a past project, so you don't necessarily have the same yellows. I have a lot of yellows here. But you just make decisions about how you want it to go. And you might not want your rainbow to go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple in, in like the traditional uh, sequence. You might want yours to be like uh, pink, orange, pink, orange, pink, orange. So if, you, if that's what you want, you should do that. And like I said, if you want your rainbow to go away and instead you want more lamb's tongues because you look at it and you think, I don't like this sweep going out of the picture, take the rainbow out, right? I, I do like the rainbow, but you could easily go like this and add some more lamb's tongues, right? And if it's the, if it's if you do that to my pattern, I'm going to be so happy because if I ever see it, I'm going to think, you know what? That person, they knew what they meant to do. They, they could see how they liked it better, and they went ahead and did it. And that makes me so happy because that shows that you have confidence, right? And that is that's the only thing that's important. Oh, I can hear my voice on replay outside. How weird is that? It's a bit creepy. 
All right. Now, you know how I like to come to the, around the circle and have a nice clean edge? This part of the composition isn't going to have that, is it? Because this is where <laughs> this is where the rainbow ends. <laughs> um, so it's not going to have that. I'm going to have all my ends even. You can see how in the future I might want to hook this into a square to clean up at least this part. Right? So I've got that color in there now. And now I'm thinking about, let's see. And you look, you're looking too, right? Well, I'm doing some looking, you're looking too. See, I could put my strip in, but now my strips are too small. That is my own stupid problem. And you know what else? Oh boy, I did some stupid stuff here. You know what else? I kind of like the peach, right? Because I have two, I have two different peaches here. Um, hmm. Ooh, I've also got. Ooh, I've got a yellow, like a butter yellow I haven't used yet. I'm going to go for these two. So I'm going to cut another one of these guys. Hey, Samantha Stewart, how are you? I am doing well tonight. I think we're all having some busy time. I can, I can just feel the weight of all of those heads down working on either on this or on your own project. I can just feel it, right? I can just feel it. It's a good, it's a good feeling. I love it when we work on projects together. I've been working on the book so much and it's, it's stuff, it's content that I don't really want to show tons of because then it won't be not the first book, but the second book, it won't be that exciting, you know? Um, and I've been doing so much secret stuff that I number one, feel like I'm cheating on you and I'm a traitor because I want to show everything immediately. Um, so days like this, nights like this are special because I feel like us doing something together um, I just feel the energy, you know, being, working in tandem, you know, working at the same time is something. There is something to be said for all that good, all that good energy. And I don't know what you're working on. I wish I could just close my eyes and just flash like a slideshow to all of the different things on, on your laps right now. I mean, that would be such a cool superpower. I think if, if I had to choose between flying or something and being able to close my eyes and see what other people are working on, on their rug hooking frames, I would definitely choose that. Definitely. Way more fun. Anyway, half the time when I fall asleep, I fly, I fly in my dreams, which I know a lot of people would love to do and, and don't do. Um, so I'm not complaining about it, but man, sometimes I get so scared um, from flying over a big building or over a canyon or something like that. Um, Samantha, I am in, do we have moderators? Yes, we definitely have moderators. I'm a moderator and there are other people on right now um, who are looking at comments for sure. Um, so I'm hoping that if there's any spam, I don't think I've missed any, we, that gets kicked off immediately. But um, yeah, I am not moderating currently because I'm demonstrating. But yeah, there are people on who are looking for comments. I'm just looking at the bottom of this and I feel like that's okay. I just felt like there might be a gap, but I think we're okay there. There might be a little holiday in here. I'm not going to worry about that right now. If it is, it's um, very slight. And that's another yellow. So I just want to let you know what I'm thinking. Um, this purple is very close to that. I wish I had done that earlier. I want to use this blue in the sky because it's very close to this. So, um, well, Samantha, in terms of moderating, um, in terms of moderating, if somebody puts in an appropriate comment, um, the comment gets reported and deleted. So that's that's how that works because we're going to stay live, um, and there's not the opportunity on this platform to uh, like post something lewd, right? It's just comments. It's not like uh, photo opportunities or anything. This is kind of nice too. This is kind of a. Um, seashell or oyster that's kind of an oyster color i think i might do oyster do butter do purple and that might be the end of my rainbow because my intention with the rainbow okay so i'm, I'm getting a little bit worried about that um we'll see how that goes um anyway we'll see how that goes i know you are all watching the thread oh okay um, well, we have a Facebook group too, Samantha, and um, there's moderators on that too. But yeah, I mean, we, we have official admins in place because the brand's been in place for a while. And um, yeah, we're careful. For this format, I think we're good. So 
this isn't exactly going like a rainbow, but what I did mean to do is um, just get some good pastel colors, right? I was just thinking of doing kind of an art deco uh, shift over here because I knew there was going to be a lot of color repetition. Yeah, we're not, a lot of us are not on Facebook. So I'm so sorry about the, to the change of time with this today. I said it at the beginning, and if you hadn't logged on yet, I just wanted to say I'm so sorry. Uh, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law uh, came from the Netherlands. So there was a lot of movement with flights and time today. And it was, um, it was uh, there was a lot of uh, moving parts. So time did not go the way I thought it was going to go. And that's why I had to bump our time back uh, quite a bit. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I forgot when I put this into place that that date was on the calendar too. Uh, so that was a bit of a moving target. But um, where was I going with that? I forgot what I was going to say. Whew, that thought just left my mind completely. So I was thinking of this as kind of like an art deco um, slide. And let me just kill this tail and come under here. I just wanted a lot of neutrals to break up the movement of the lamb's tongues because we're going to be at the lamb's tongues pretty soon. And I think I will punch the lamb's tongues because why not? I have tons of yarn sitting around, right? Um, Samantha, just so you know, I'm in Connecticut and I think we're all kind of spread out, right? We're all in wacky places. I think I'm going to next go to... You know what, next I'm gonna to go to this lilac, which I should, probably should have put next to the hydrangea color, but I missed that. And then my last color is gonna be the butter color. And I like, it's like an ivory, a vanilla. I'm gonna put that last because visually that's gonna connect very well to the tree, isn't it? Because I did so many yellows on my tree. Now I don't need to cut a whole strip with this. Oh, thanks, Samantha. With the YouTube, this is, I'm actually using a different platform. Um, this is Streamlabs, um, but it goes through YouTube. Um, but with YouTube, I run the live shows three times a week. And um, yeah, usually we're pretty good. We're pretty, we're not a, a really naughty group. There are the occasional interlopers who come in and shake things up. But um, yeah, it's mostly on Facebook that I, I moderate because obviously on Facebook, there can be a lot of problems. And in live shows, there can too. Um, but yeah, I think we've been pretty lucky so far. This piece I cut a little bit wider than the others, so I'm having a little bit of a struggle. But again, confidence, right? Just going to keep going. I trust myself. I trust this line is going to come out well. I'm so familiar and comfortable and in love with this medium that I, um, I know that in the end, all of these loops are going to mush up against each other. And it's going to be a perfect, perfect fusion. It's going to be like a salad, a cocktail salad of greatness here, right? I do like these colors together. Samantha, I live stream on Monday, so we have a show tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time. We, I'm going to finish off the fairy tale book because I have not had time with visitors and with the show tonight to do new content. So we have not covered all that content. On Wednesday, we will go toward, I'm going to cut up the butter piece now, and that's going to be the last strip of the rainbow. Um, then we're going to hit the blue sky, and then we're going to finish off with the punching the lamb's tongues. Maybe I'll hook one, and I'll punch the others just for technique. Um, and you can see this, at this point, this is kind of graduated, right, from large to small. So by the time I get here, this is a really small strip. So I don't need to cut a really big piece, or I'm going to waste it. And I do not like wasting. So Wednesday we will hit, uh, tomorrow we will finish up the fairy tale book. It's just never enough fun with that fairy tale book, I'm telling you. Robin Rennie's fairy tale book, Hooking, Hooking Fairy Tales. And you know, today, not today, um, God, when was it? It was one day this week. I was looking at books and I was looking online and we were talking about all the different artists, right, who have illustrated, oh, see, now I didn't cut it long enough, who have illustrated fairy books over the years. And um, I found that I had a book already by, remember Ann Anderson? We covered her, I think, on Wednesday. And I said, oh, you know, she's one of my favorites. She's one of these unknown I do have another book that's illustrated by her, so um, maybe I'll be able to find that in time and show you some of the, it's, it's not a well-known fairy tale. It's not even a fairy tale, I think it's just a kid's book. But it just went to show, I started browsing, um, I started browsing on my own bookshelves and I found some of the stuff that we were talking about, so yeah. Yeah. 
Let me just do a couple more loops here. And you know, oops, wait a minute. I've got, oh my gosh, look at that. I picked up the wrong color. That surprised me. <laughs> it's definitely the wrong color. Um, I'm not going to put a tail up here. And you know why? If you're, if you're watching what I'm doing, you can see these are big fat loops. I really don't want to put a tail in the middle of that sequence. I'm going to put one at the end. And that's going to be the end of the rainbow. That's that for the rainbow. So I'm looking at what I need to do next. Now this is really driving me crazy, this small holiday here. I think we need to get this guy in, right? That's the next logical thing. So, all right, let's see. I'm gonna cut some more blue, all right, this is me. And if you have this kit, right, you have a lot of gray. Um, well, you have two grays. You should have a gray that's like a light silvery gray, and then you should have a darker one that's more toward a brown. And you can absolutely be using those in the main mode. Uh, see, I'm cutting this too thick again. That's all right. That's all right. It's because I forgot to cut these, right? We're going to make do, and it's going to be great. Um, I'm just making decisions here. Hang on. Let's take care of this first. This has been driving me nuts right here. I'm going to get right in here. And I do, I do not think I'm going to put a tail up there, right? Because it's such a small area. It's only going to fit. This is that holiday that has been plaguing us. I'm going to clean this up because my eye keeps going to this. All right. And I can pull a tail at the bottom because that actually does make sense. Now, I'm not going to accidentally <laughs> hook something there again, right? Because I've already done that five times. You probably can't tell on the monitor, but this is Robin's Egg Blue, and it's very, very different than the green color that I've been using. So remember up here when I left off on this edge, I said I'm going to come up in that same hole and continue this sweep? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Because in order to make this round, as round as it can be, I really need to be careful about interruptions. Now, where the rainbow ended, there's nothing I can do about that, but you can see that rainbow ended on a nice clean line, right? That resolved itself nicely. But I wanna be really careful with stopping and starting with color. I want the continuum to be really smooth, really seamless, right? So I'm thoughtful about that. I'm coming up to a lamb's tongue, and I can you can see right here, this loop ended right at the edge of where I'm going to want to make a, a curve. So I'm, I'm going to underneath, right, underneath my frame, I'm going to turn. And if you're new and you're like, what's that? Like with everything else in rug hooking, it's doing a turn um, is harder with something wide like this primitive cut. It literally means I've got my loops going in one direction and underneath I'm literally turning my hand because I want to I want to create a sharper angle, right? And I'm going to pull up in a different direction. You see what I mean? My hand literally turned and brought that right around. I could stop here with a tail and start here again, but then I get two ratty tails. So, I made a turn underneath by twisting, right? And that that's what I'm going to do under here because I want to accommodate the lamb's tongue. And this is a really wide piece because I cut it with my scissors. So I am seeing the comments and Samantha, I'm very happy that you have a, a channel, but we are like rug, we are all rug hookers here. Um, I think and rug makers and uh, textile artists. So, um, I'm running what will be a three-hour live stream today, and uh, that's a lot of free on air time for me, so I don't really uh, advertise other brands and other channels while I'm running live. I just do way too much work uh, to do that. So I came around the end there, and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to try to cut a smaller piece here. I'm going to fill this in too. But at this point, where I am in my game is I am hooking around to accommodate the lamb's tongues. And, you know, the lamb's tongues can be hooked, can be punched. It could be that you eliminate them altogether. There's so many things that you could do with these lamb's tongues. 
I have a selvage on my edge and I just hated the way it looked when it came up. So I'm going to cut that off. Some people cut off their selvages, period, to hook with them. Um, in, in different projects, you know, selvages are great for hit or miss, but um, sometimes they're just too dimpled and textured, right? So I'm coming around here. And I still cut a little bit on the wide side, a little bit. Let's see. All right. And I'm making decisions as I go, right? These are decisions you'll have to make. I have a little gap here, so I am going to pull up and cut. And can you see what's happening here? It's very reminiscent of that green line that I did. Um, I have a little holiday, right? So there we go. So you know what? Same as before. It's not going to be a big strip. I don't need to do all of it, but it is quite a wide strip, and I am going to cut it in half to fill in that holiday. I'm going to use the materials that I have, right? Because why not? There's no, um, I'm not going to be looking for other stuff. I'm just going to, as long as I don't need it somewhere else, it makes perfect sense to cut it. And of course I can use the other half later. Pull that up there. And that worked out pretty well. That was perfectly calculated. That hardly ever happens. So that whole corner, looks good to me. Do you see how there is quite a definition, even in the dark, between this sweep and this grass, right? So that shows really well. That shows really well, even with the camera and the lights glaring down on it. Thanks, Linda Ann. I think the robin's egg blue is really good for the sky because it's so close. I'm going to take a picture of this for you tomorrow, and I'm going to show it on coffee time. Um, because the colors really are, I think, prettier than they're coming up on the monitor. This always happens to us. I'm coming to another crossroads here because you can see I'm coming to a place where I need to make a decision. Do I want to follow this sweep or do I want to come up here and maintain this? I think there is not a right answer, right? There's not a right answer. But I think for myself, I'm going to head up this way. It's kind of like uh, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, right? And... Sorry, I could not travel both and be one travel along I stood and looked on one as far as I could. I have that whole poem memorized. I just love Robert Frost. So, and I'm going to do some uh, twisting and turning too. I'm going to make a really hard turn here, just like I did with the, with the teaching frame. Coming up like that. Now, let me do a little more Robin's egg because we have this part left to do and a tiny bit here. And then we are kind of robin, robin egged out. And good night. I'm gonna stay on a little while longer because I'm, it doesn't look like I'm on the home stretch, but I kind of am because these lamb's tongues are gonna be fast. You know, when I look at these lamb's tongues, and it was great to see you. I'll see you real soon live. Um, one of the things you want to think about with the lamb's tongues is, this is just like an academic question that I'm posing. Um, do you want to make the center of the lamb's tongue uh, the robin's egg blue? Or do you want the lamb's tongues to go down in different colors right down to the last little blip? So that's, that's not a question for me to answer. That's a question for you to answer. I think I'm going to turn again here. Right, I'm doing that technique where underneath my fingers turned the piece. So it, it literally takes like a 45 degree turn. Um, for myself, I, I typically like it when the lamb's tongues are not hollow, meaning like a rainbow. I like it when the color change goes right down to the bottom. So it's up to you if you're like, well, I'd like it if it were a bit more lacy and I could see that the sky color through it, then you should put the last tier or even alternating tears in that blue color. But if you also like a more solid lamb's tongue, then you know that you're not gonna do that. You're gonna go right down with other colors. So this is always tricky here, right? Because I'm coming around and I'm gonna meet up with the edge of the rainbow and I want my pieces to look nice. I'm gonna angle them off a little bit. This is not hard technique stuff. This is just me squeezing loops in, right, right in there. And bring the tail up little bit more. I'm going to cut another piece. 
Oh, you recognize the Robert Frost. You love poetry. My fave is the Vagabond's House being the traveler. <laughs> it's, it, and it says so in Solo Camper and Merry Traveler. I love that, Kim. I love that. Except for one unpc line in it. Well, that does happen with stuff that's a little bit dated, doesn't it? I mean, it's just, yeah. When I think of the way my grandmother talked, man, you could, you could not call it poetry. She was the sweetest lady in the world, but she said some beauties, like some real beauties that in this culture now, holy mackerel, right? You would, like someone, yeah, you, you would not, you would not live to see the door uh, and the way out. But yeah, it's just different times, isn't it? I love, I love Robert Frost. I love, I love poetry in general. And I think my favorite is still Mary Oliver. I love Mary Oliver. Oh, no, I think my favorite is E.E. E. Cummings. I think, that, and then Mary Oliver. And T.S. Eliot's in there, too. Sometimes I like more challenging stuff. Sometimes I like really easy stuff, you know, if I'm not feeling particularly whimsical and whatever. And isn't it funny how different things speak to you at different times? It's, uh, yeah, what a gift. What a gift. I'm really hoping, I haven't seen lately, at least where I am, and I'm in Hamden, Connecticut, um, the studios in Bethany, Connecticut. I just made another turn, just so you know, if you're, if you're, you know, giving me a lot of attention. Um, I just made another turn. So you might want to do that too when you get to that part, just to fill the spot in, right? I don't want to do a lot of stopping and starting because I do not like um, tails. So I just kind of fill it in. Did I just carry a little bit across the way to make that stretch? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Is someone going to come and ring the doorbell, right? I don't think so. I think we're good. So I'm going to have to cut another strip. Um, I haven't seen a lot of um, poetry reading and stuff lately. It used to be pre-COVID, I felt like there was a lot of stand-up stuff where people would get up and read. Because I used to write some poems, and I loved to, I would love to get up and read them again. You know, it's always nice to see. And I love to hear other people read their own poems. Because there's just something about it. The voice going with the poem, you know what I mean, is... Um, Really fun. Really fun. That's why I like to listen to book cassettes where the author has narrated their book. Because I just feel like they put they put the precise meaning of, of the written word uh, into the, their tone and into their voice. The emphasis is in the right place. Whereas, you know all those stupid memes on Facebook where if you put the period in the wrong place or if you, uh, you put the uh, apostrophe in the wrong place, it's like... Um, you get a completely different meaning and how in the English language and in every language, um, that's, a, that's a real problem. Um, it doesn't work like that when someone is reading their own work. You know that it's coming out exactly the way that they meant it and heard it. And I love poetry. I just love it. It's like, it's like, it's like a word. It's like a song of words without the music. I love music too. But I tend to, for myself, when I listen to music, I listen to the words more than the music. And I don't consider myself like a great musician or anything like that. I love, I love singing. Um, but I, if the words aren't great, I'm probably not going to be that interested in the song, even if it's the best song in the world. I was listening to Janice Ian at 17, and really that is like the best song in the world. But, um, you know, the words, right, the words, like, everybody who knows that song gets gets that reference because it's like, whoa, we've all been there. Um, yeah, and sometimes songs have a great beat, but the words are so stupid, and I just can't, I can't get on board, you know. Got a little more blue to do. Kim says, Tiana, I know you don't like flying, though. It's a long trip. Australia needs a workshop. You know, one of these days I'm going to put on my big girl pants, Kim, and I'm going to take the trip. Um these two of my best friends, it's a, a married female couple are, are in Australia and they have visited me a couple of times and I have not been there yet. And they remind me that I have not been there yet. Um, I feel like it would be great to go to Australia. Um, like, cause it's the opposite season, isn't it? Like, I think it'd be funny to go around, um, Christmas. I wouldn't want to be gone for Christmas, of course. But I just think it'd be funny because I know the way that they decorate. I'm just over here now filling in this little area. The way that you decorate, well, my, my buddies decorate their house is over the top, right? Because my Australian friends, their favorite things in the world, and I've got to make a rug for her. I told her I wouldn't. I've got to make a rug for her. Favorite things in the world are um, Disney, Hawaii, and Elvis. I'm not kidding. I think in that order, too. Um, 
so yeah so you know when she, when they come and visit my friend um Leslie has come more uh, than her partner Jackie because Jackie's had some health problems. She's she's totally fine now, but um, we I take them to Yankee Candle, the big flagship store in Deerfield, Connecticut. It is it's not just candles. Holy mackerel, it's everything, and she goes nuts buying like all those beautiful glass German glass ornaments for the tree. Of course they have Elvis. Of course they have Disney stuff, and they have Hawaiian shirts and cocktails and roller skates and 1950s diners and she gets all of that stuff because it's so kitschy american like old-timey you know roadsidey and ah oh, i just she sends pictures of the tree the way that they decorate it and it's just like man i would love i'd love to do that kind of christmas sometime and just uh, just have that different experience i could never give christmas up right i could not be gone at christmas but I could be gone around then then and really enjoy get away from the cold and really enjoy a little bit of a culture reversal, really, right? Still celebrating the same holiday, but um, in the completely opposite season. I think it would be super fun, and I would love to do a workshop there. I'd probably be fine. I mean, once I'm sitting on the plane, I just feel like, um, you know, I, I get to a certain point where it's like, well, we're high enough now that if this plane is going down, I'm not going to make it. So I get to peace with that. Like, okay, I'm not. Gonna, I'm at the point of no return. We're up in the sky. I can't see the ground. If the plane goes down, I ain't going to make it. And, and and then I spend the next however many hours thinking, uh, it is what it is. Come to peace with it, right? And it takes it takes some time because I'm crazy. But, um, yeah, I hit a certain point where it's like uh, it doesn't get any worse. You know what I mean? That, I mean, I have to say, I really like this. I think it's really cute. I think it's real. So, Kim, that was a roundabout way of saying Yes. Linda Ann, is that store where they had all the fun Halloween stuff that you posted in your pictures last year? Who? There were so many. No, I think that was a farm stand in Connecticut. Because there was a day last year. Let me get started on the lamb's tongue, and then we'll remember that. Because that was, oh my God, that was so fun. I think I might punch. I think I might punch. I'm going to mix it up. Jay, if you're listening, can you bring in some colors of three-ply? Like anything? I'm going to do some punchies. Let's see how it goes. Um, so I have my, this is my Oxford, right? So this is one of my Oxfords I've got. I'm going to come up a little bit and because it's going to be faster to finish this way. I was getting tired. I was also getting tired. Um, let me start this and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I thread this guy. I'm not using my needle nanny. There we go. Um, thread, threading it like this, like all the punches I sell are the worsted weight. This is a regular weight. And I have got three ply yarn right here. So it went right up this cavity, right, right up this line, and right out the top, like ch -ch -ch, like that, right? So the hollow part is under here, and it's coming right out of the top like that. And it's almost like a horrible reference, but a syringe. And I don't need that much of a tail on it, a little bit of a tail. Um, I, I'm going to say that uh, burlap and linen are my least favorite um, surfaces to punch into. I'm going to start up here actually um, because they're so wide open. Now uh, loose, the backing is loose. Um, come a little bit closer. I'm going to start up here. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. No, nope, I'm on the wrong side. I am tired, man. Hang on. I've got to get you over here because when you punch, you punch the opposite side, right? You, you punch in reverse and some people like the reverse side better. So tail party you ready for a tail party um so what i'm going to do is flip over punching works in reverse gonna make it as tight as a drum same as before awesome thank you but that one's a two ply, that's the two ply yeah yeah and maybe a couple more colors so you can see here i can't see my picture anymore because my picture's on the other side so it's worth taking a second to just sketch in. This is just to connect the dots, right? Sketch in those lines. I'm going to put those lines there. And these lines are going to be like this, I can tell, right? Because I'm just filling in my circle on this side. That is the beauty of doing punch in conjunction. I know, Ryan, no lines. Um, look at these shameful tails. You see this? You see this, Jean? Look at me. I said I don't do too much to it, but you get, but the tails do. Now that I'm looking at the tails, they drive me nuts. Um, but it's all it's all good. With punch, I'm not disconnecting from my yarn, right? Um, I leave it. I leave. Uh, I leave it there in a cake, 
and I make sure it's nice and loose because if my yarn, where am I? If my yarn, yeah, there I am, um, gets caught up, I put my elbow on it or something like that, it's not going to work. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Good, good, good. So I'm going to come in and I would not use, I would not use, you, you can, right? We all have to be who we are. You can use a, a worsted weight, which is also called a fine punch needle in linen if you would like to. I feel linen, at least I, I use Michelle McRelly's linen. It is the softest, most supple, uh, soft, soft, softy linen. And I love it. Um, but it's loose, right? And I do not want to use it with a, with a worsted needle because unless I'm, uh, the worsted needle only takes the two ply, this is the three ply. I'm just not sure it's going to stick that well, right? That's me. That's me. You might feel differently. I think I'm going to, hang on. Right, I just want to make a distinction here. For speed, right, I'm going to come Sorry, I just got to think sometimes. I'm making decisions as I go here. Um, yeah, I would use the worsted weight. I use my worsted weight a lot. I just did the elephant in the room um, on rug warp, right? That is a much tighter backing, way tighter backing. This, not at all. This is a very loose backing, so I've got the much wider. The punch needles only come in the two sizes, really. The regular, which is this one, the big fat one, and the fine, which is also called worsted weight. Oh, I'm right up against my frame. All right, hang on. I'm gonna have to shift this a little bit. I felt the wood hit the tip, so we don't want that. Let me shift this over. And tightening up again. This is the beauty of, you know, you saw, you saw how I stopped, right? This is no big deal, I fixed that like this. I, I can't have a big loose end like this. I have to pull on my thread to get it tight again, right? I don't want any slack when I'm punching. I'm punching right down to the hilt every time. And then I hold on to it. If you saw my finger, just hold on to it to pull up. Right? My tails are up here now, so all the tails are on this side at this moment. And my pile is on the other side. I'll show you my pile in a minute. It's quite even with the rest of it, actually. I think I'm going to, let me come over here now, because I don't want them all to be pink around the edges but I am conscious of the time too. So let me come over here, go right down to the hilt every time. And the loop is dictated by the length of the shaft, right? Like without being, without being dirty. Um, I put washers, which are also called O-rings. The rubber washers are like a plumbing thing that uh, easier to find at a small hardware store than at Home Depot, right? Um, Cause people actually spend the time to help you get the right washer for the size, the this, this shaft, right? Regular versus regular slash the large versus um, the fine worsted. So I'm back down here. I want to change my pink. So I'm taking that out and let's go, let me go for the green now. This is like a color changing green and I'm going to lace up again here so right up I start right at the back of the needle right right up in the back right up into it and this is too fluffy fender washers fender washers Ryan is that is that what those are called those little o-rings the little the little rubber rings are those called fender washers you see how this guy is really thick this is more than three ply I'm gonna just encourage him no, he doesn't want to be encouraged. When I start hooking, well, I'm sorry, when I start, yeah, there we go, punching, he's going to fall into, he's going to submit, believe me. Um, I made a mistake here, though, and I want to, even though I'm worried about the time and thinking about the time, you see what I did? I hooked up to the yarn that's going around the edge. I think I'm going to stay with it, but typically, I really want to pull from the center, right? Because you pull from the center, and it's like magician pulling scarves out of his nostrils, right? Just flows, right? When you pull around the sides, it, it's like Victorian cat is playing with your ball. It moves the ball, right? So I'm not going to waste time re-jigging and re-threading, but I do know um, that I should have looked to see if I was pulling from the center of the cake, which is ideal, or around the edge of the cake. And it's going to make it spin like a top. You know, and it's going to fall on the floor and it's going to pull some of your loops out and all of that. Make sure 
that you are pulling from the center of your cake, which I am not. Do as I say, not as I do, right? So it went right around there too. You see how much faster uh, punching is? That one was really fat. So let me show you what I mean. I don't know if I even like that. You see how this pink one is nice and quiet and this one is really fat. I guess I'll leave it because we're just fooling around, right? We're just fooling around. But, and you know, it does make the point, I'm gonna do this one here, There's the same green. This is much thicker. This is more like a four ply. This is not uh, Briggs and Little, which is the, the yarn I typically use. This is a much fatter one that I got a while back and I dyed um, that I really like. And it's great for hooking and it's great for punching, but it is different than the other. So I have a pretty uniform look happening with my, even though I've cut some stuff with scissors and I've cut some stuff with um, pre-cut you know, pre strips on my Sizzix cutter, even though, even, even for that, with that in mind, it's a pretty uniform looking piece. And this particular fiber is making it look less uniform um, because it's a very different uh, thickness. So again, this falls into the category of, I'm not quite tight enough, this falls into the category of can you live with it? Will you cry yourself to sleep? Is it going to be okay? Or is it going to drive you crazy that one of your uh, lamb's tongues has a different thickness in it? You might embrace the uh, viva la difference, right, and say like, well, since we're going in this direction, let's let's do it. Let's let's put our foot down on the gas, and let me find all my eyelash yarn and all my yarn of different weights and all my crazy novelty yarn. If we're going to do it, let's do it, right? Let's not do it in halves. So you might say that too and think, what better place in a composition for variation than on these crazy hit or miss lamb's tongues, right? I mean, that's really what lamb's tongues are for to use stuff up. So. If you're okay with throwing in some different fibers, absolutely do it. So I did that one. Let's move to a different one now. Let me thread up another one. Oh, I like this one a lot. I'm going to pull from the center this time. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. It's got a little bit of white there. You see that? I guess I'm okay with that. This is a color changing one. So this is going to look a little bit different. Ryan says, yes, that guy at the hardware store gave me some guff <laughs> when I didn't know what they were. Fender watch. Ryan, thank God you told us that. I did not know that. I did not know that. Every time I go, I've been lucky so far. Um, they know what I'm talking about. But I do, I'm going to cut the white off. It's going to bother me. Uh, I do not want to be I, I do not want to be mocked at the hardware store. So fender washers, everyone, that's going to go into our our seriously our dictionary of important terms for rug making fender wa i would never have thought fender washers because isn't does a fender have a different definition other than a car fender and a guitar is there and a fireplace fender i guess now that i think about the fireplace fender i guess that kind of reference of the in-between thing maybe that is right right why it's called fender i have no idea how these are going to come out because this is yet again a different weight I guess we're gonna find out, right? When I flip it over, let's just let's just finish it and see what happens. Now, if you have this kit, right, and you are not you're not a punch needler, and you're like, why is she going out off on a bender like this? What is this? A 45 minute jazz song? Kind of, kind of. It's kind of like something between a 45 minute jazz song and a dance-a-thon, where we all drop dead at the end. It's something between, but um, yeah. You would, you would keep going doing just what we've doing with, with the tree with your wool strips, right? That's what you would keep doing with this kit, with your wool strips. You would rainbow out the way that we did this, the way that we did these parts. You would be doing that with your, um, with your wool strips that you have pre-cut. Because I pre-cut yours. I just forgot to pre-cut mine. So it's just the same as the kids. I always have them all set with everything. And then I forget to do the thing myself, like pack the clothes, you know? Pack my shampoo. I got all their stuff. It's just the way it is, isn't it? But we're getting there fast. And this is the thing about punch needle. Right down to the hilt every time, right? Do, do not lift the needle up. Let it scrape across. Do not fill in every hole. You got to gauge it, right? I have different thicknesses. So with the, with the thicker yarns that I'm using right now, I cover, I do less, uh, I, I, I don't do as closely. I cover less surface. I, I jump around more because the thicker yarns need, I don't want to go in there because that's green. Come over here. 
they need a bit more room, right? You don't want to pack it up too much. You should see little channels of space. Keep that tail out of my way. In between. Um, and why do I not, why is linen not my favorite backing to hook, to punch into? Uh, for me, and again, if this is a for me. This is going to start with for me. I think I got more blue here, so I'm going to come back down here. This is a variegated yarn, so not all of it is um, green. That part's really blue. Um, for me, linen and, well, for everybody, linen and uh, burlap are more brittle, right? They're more brittle. Uh, Michelle Micarelli's not. Hers is very, very supple, soft, very, very soft. Uh, almost feels like silky, you know? It's, it's a completely different linen, and that's why I stock it, and that's why I love it. Um, but most linens and, and burlap certainly are, um, well, the Scottish burlap is more kind of waxy, right? So it's a bit different. It feels more sort of, uh, cottony, right? It's, it's smoother, but most linens and burlaps are pretty, um, I don't think orange. Let me use this one next. I'm going to go for this next are pretty brittle. And I just feel like uh, there's been too many times that I have seen with teaching and stuff, people who opted for a linen background who are beginners, I've seen them punch right through, oh, look what's going on here. It's a Russian nesting doll, uh, yarn within yarn. I've seen them punch right through and rip a hole. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh-oh, barf. <laughs> um, yeah, I've seen that happen, and it makes me nervous. I've seen it happen with monk's cloth, too punching a hole right through the piece and yeah you can patch it but who wants you know that layer of aggravation right so i'm using this color now another one that i hand dyed ages ago and again this one's a little bit of a thicky so let's see how it goes i am sure if i end up keeping and i have to say i'm kind of liking these lamb's tongues i can see my daughter jocelyn really liking this piece because it's getting all colorful and pretty you know She's not a girly girl, but she she would not admit it, but she loves like these pretty girly colors. Um, Teddy also loves pink as his favorite color. He might be fighting her for this piece if I turn it into a little pillow or something. But I can see myself wanting to put an edge around it because at this point, improvising the way that I have, your color kits are pretty controlled, but I've gone off on several spacey benders. So I got a lot of color here, and I can see myself wanting to hem it in with some very somber antique black you know what I mean and at the end of this I'm going to show you one more little trick to do with the punching I know that this is not a lesson in punching I just want to show you how easy it is and remind you that you have to work in reverse so you can't flip over oops I just punched see that's the thing about punch I just punched out a green bit we'll have to deal with that on the other side um, I just want to remind you that it's reverse. So you can't just at any point in the project say, okay, I, I want to speed this up. I want to fast forward. Let's turn over and punch because the lines aren't going to be there. So unless you're going to put your piece up against the window or something bright or a light box and you're going to trace the lines onto the other side, you saw that when I flipped, the lines were no longer there, right? So knowing that it made a lot of sense for me to flip this project at the point that I did because the only thing remaining shape-wise in this project were the lamb's tongues, right? And they all are shaped like, guess what, lamb's tongues. So it was absolutely the right moment for me to um, flip because I knew I could easily take the Sharpie and fill in the lamb's tongues. But say you flipped over and you had to do the faces on a couple of characters and the lines aren't there, that's going to be a problem. Right, that's going to be a problem. So you want to think strategically about, yeah, I want to use the I want to use the precision of hooking, but I want to use the speed of punching too. You want to think about at what point in your piece it makes the most sense to flip over to punch, because you are going to be minus those lines. And yes, you can trace them on both sides. Of course you can, but you got to plan for that. You got to have a plan in place. Otherwise, you're going to flip it over and you're going to go, whoa, -oh, did I do that? right? Because it's, there's not going to be those lines. There's going to be no guide at all. So it is a great idea to flip. Now I want to use more of this, but I got to switch colors in the meantime. Oh yeah, here we go. There's a little bit of this mustard color and I'm going to want to use this for sure because I have so much mustard in this tree. This is actually, these colors are fantastic. 
Jay, I don't know if you picked these colors based on what looking up and glancing at the monitor because he's in the he's in the other room doing his antiques. But uh, man, did he choose the the perfect colors, right? I mean, this is like crazy. These are absolutely the perfect colors. Really good. All right, and I'm around the side again because I forgot to go in the center of the cape. So do as I say, not as I do, right? You want to, if, if for this kind of a short stretch, who cares? But if you're going to be punching for a while, you really want to be in the center of the cake. And some people say, oh, I don't want to be in the center of the cake because all the, the yarn is all kinked up in the center of the cake. It's all kinky in the center of the, of the cake. Well, yeah, it is. But when, you, when you're punching it into loops, who cares? You're going to unkink real fast. So that's not a thing. Don't think about that as a thing. Oh, I do like this gold. I quite like this gold. This was a great idea to do a little bit of punching too. I did this with the last one with the little foxes too. It's a great idea and it's a great reminder that you can switch in between. You could also take out a sewing needle, right? You could do some cruel stitches, right? You could do some Erica Wilson it up. Why shouldn't you, right? This is fabric. This is fabric. You can use your hook. You can use your punch. You can use your sewing needle. You can add your quillies. You can add your pennies. You can do whatever you want. You can attach anything to anything because this is fabric. Sometimes we get, I think, so caught up in the idea that this craft is hooking, right? And, and this, is, this is the tool. This is the material. This is the cutter. I think sometimes we get so having a little bit of a struggle here. Hang on. I'm just figuring, figuring out where to go with this. All right. I don't want to pop out the pieces before. I'm feeling through to the other side too because sometimes the linen has a slight imperfection. Even the best linen, and this is the best linen, uh, you have to be careful, right? I don't want to be ripping a hole in it at this point. Um, yeah, sometimes I think we get so caught up in the P's and Q's that we forget that this is a piece of fabric. And if you like doing collage, you like doing wool applique, you like crocheting, a lot of people crochet the edges, but you could certainly apply crocheted bits to the uh, composition, to the interior. Um, you know, if you like doing lace, you can find ways to attach anything, right? It doesn't have to just be all the same medium. Now look over here. You see I'm right at the end of this little guy, so I'm going to be really careful. I think I'm going to get one loop. I forced two. That's it. I'm, I'm not going to push my luck. I was holding my breath there. I have no idea how this is going to look. I, I honestly don't on the other side because at this point I've got at least four different weights of yarn, um, which could be great or it could be awful. I have a feeling when I flip it over. Now I got I got all of those mustards done. I have a feeling when I flip it over, it's going to be a question of. I love it and it's really wild and wooly. I'm not done yet. I got to fill out these little guys. Um, it's wild and wooly, but, right, there's always a but. Um, oh, look at that. I'm going to use some of that, too. I'm going to want to hook around the edges, right? I, I have a feeling that's going to happen because there's a lot happening here. There's a lot color-wise happening here. The nature of this composition is that your eye is leaving the composition because the rainbow is shooting off the side. That can be exciting. It can also be unsettling. And now that I've dropped in so many other colors, I have a feeling it could be very unsettling. And the lamb's tongues are running off the side too. So I'm just picturing with a nice antique black, right, with lots of splashes of, of gray, of indigo blue, of maybe a little bit of magenta in there, splashes of other colors in my antique black. Um, oop, I need to get up a little bit closer there. It could really hem in. And the reason I say antique black instead of regular black is because I have so many colors in this piece, right? And antique black typically has not just black in it, but hints of other colors, right? shadows of other colors. And I think having those other colors kind of embedded in the frame of this piece is going to help pop the enormous amount of color that is, is present. All I'm doing now, right, I finished this, these two up on this side. I'm just dealing with these last ones. And at this point, you know what I could even do? I could even, I think I won't because I, I want to go fast. But I could even drop in, um, I could return to wool strips, right? Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I return to wool strips? I mean, I don't have a permit, right, to keep jumping back and forth. I'm just kidding. Between um, punching and hooking. But absolutely nothing to stop me. If I like the idea of a more stable, wider strip inside, 
the, la the lamb's tongues, then absolutely I should do that. I'm thinking about speed, and I'm thinking I haven't eaten for a while. I'm thinking I ordered, um, I got a, a sandwich earlier, and I took, I, and I only ate part of it, and it was like one of those gobblers, right? And it was like, uh, you know, Thanksgiving sandwich that has the turkey slices and um, cranberry sauce and a little bit of mayo and a little bit of stuffing. I only ate half of that guy because I was that sort of uh, freaked out and rushed. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, that little devil is like probably still in the back of the car. Um, all right. I'm right at the end, right? I am right at the end of this puppy. I got to fill in these spaces. And now I'm just looking back at the, I don't want to do any more with yellow. Yellow is really, really strong. I think I got to come back. No, I'm going to come back to this one. I'm going to come back to this one. And I'm going to take from the center this time. And we are almost at the unveiling part. It might be that I hate the way that the lamb's tongues look punched, right? It, man, it ain't going to be the first time I look at my work and I go, I hate it. <laughs> but, you know, everything is fixable. And if it turns out that I wanted to, that I hate it, right? And I went, oh, man, I wish I just would have stuck with the wool strips. I could just take the lamb's tongues out. How long did it take to do these, right? Did it take 20 minutes? I'm not going to worry about 20 minutes in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to worry that I, I like my piece. And if it means I have to revisit it, then I'll revisit it. It's worth it, right? It's my piece. Uh, I owe it. I owe it to this piece to make it to make it pretty and to make it into something that's the best that it can be. Right? It's a little bit of a child every time you work on a piece. I'll say the um, regular punch is so big. I've been working with a worsted weight, doing my elephant and doing the the whale that I started, and I kind of forgot. Man, the the regular punch is giant. The tip of it is absolutely giant. It goes fast, goes extra fast, but yeah, it is, yeah, it is enormous. And it's a good thing it is linen because it, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to for myself with like rug warp because I'm using rug warp for the other punch projects. I would not want to punch uh, with a regular needle into the rug warp. I mean, you can, you can, but I know from finishing that elephant in like two days, it, my hand hurt a little bit. I don't have hurty hands, but it hurt a little bit. It was a little bit sore like I'd been at the gym doing God knows what to make my hand hurt, but it did. So you want to be thinking about that too because you don't want to set yourself up for pain situations, right? Because then that'll make you uh, move away from this craft. And it's too good of a craft to move away from because you're using the wrong tools and the wrong backings. That was that one. I'm on to the last Da, 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 da. Ch -ch -ch. All right, wait a minute. There we go. What time is it? Oh, my word, it's 9.45. Well, I said it might be three hours, and it was. You know, my mouth runs. I work while my mouth runs, but there are a lot of detours and distractions, and the whole point is to stay together from beginning to end. This is a dance-a-thon for hookers, right? Be falling asleep and finishing it, and that's just the way it is. All right, let's see. I'm going to get this around the edge, and then I think I have one more. Um, I'm going to have to thread up one more time. And I might be packing too much here. It's hard to tell because of the different weights. And, and I'm a great packer. You know, I'm a gr I pack hooking and punching. I tend to pack. One more color, and that is it. Get ready to give a drum roll. I think I'm going to do... Oh, gosh. I think I'm going to do a little bit of the, of the mustard color again to pull back to the center of the tree, right? Get ready for that drum roll. It's almost there. It's almost time. Now, don't be shocked, right, if I uh, do the reveal and it looks awful on the lamb's tongues. I am a big one for putting my foot down um, on the gas, like when I'm doing something like this. Because if I had more time, I would. I think I would just be cruising around the studio looking for more fancy fibers just to add to the crazy wildness of the lamb's tongues. I've, I'm pulling at the... Um, loops on the other side because I can feel they are snug and I don't want to pop any out. Drum roll, please. Let me pull this up a little bit. All right, let's see. Here we go. Ready? Oh, okay. You know, it's not bad. It's not too bad. It's not as bad as I, it's more Eastery than I thought it would be. So if you have not punched yet, let's look at this for a second before we log off. Let me get you all straightened out here. There we go.
Not bad. You remember when I punched out the green at that point? That's this guy over here. And I and I could feel I could feel the um, punch needle tip do it. So I'm not surprised. I'm literally pulling it back through. Right? It's this green pit here, you see I'm pulling it back through. Easy as that. So what do we got? It is really springy colors. It's a bit Eastery, the colors, particularly with the lamb's tongues, right? So this is quite different. If you have the kit, you have got the co it's color planned, right? So you didn't go off on a bender with all of these crazy colors. But I did. <laughs> I quite like it, actually. It's quite pretty. I'll probably, I I'm going to probably go around the edges. I'm not sure about the black anymore because it's so pastel. But let me show you close up if I can. You see all the different yarns, right? There's different uh, weights of yarn. But you can see how there is kind of a need to clean up the edges a little bit, right? With the rainbow ending, the rainbow is remarkably smooth, I have to say, but not so much the lamb's tongue. And that is in part because I punched the lamb's tongues. But it, did you see how fast I finished this project punching the lamb's tongues, right? So, I, you know, when I return to this, I'm even thinking I might do something crazy like for the border instead of the antique black i might want to do a real paprika you see what i mean because it would be such an opposite tone it would I'd be a nice rich dull tone oh thanks lisa thanks kirsten crocheted edges yeah ryan crocheted ed edges in general actually this would be a cute piece for crocheted edges but i think i'm gonna when i do finish it which won't be in the next uh 15 years i think i will do paprika like spicy, spicy, spicy paprika, because like, what is the recipe for this Easter egg? It's like all these beautiful pastels and ice cream colors. So what do I want to put to contrast this ice cream palette? I want to put a spicy border on there, right? That's what I want to do. So for me, it's about contrast, dark, light, dull, bright, right? Just more contrast, ice cream, paprika, right? More contrast. It's just, it's going to help pop this piece. I am second guessing whether I should have done a second. I think I should have. I think I should have done a second um, brown um, trunk. Don't you think? You know what I mean? Because it's really skinny and, and the, the um, it's like there's a mop balanced on top of it. I don't see another brown one right here. But you know what I mean? I feel like if I go back into it in 15 years, I'm probably going to pull out this piece or that piece and make the trunk twice as wide because there's a lot balanced on it, right? It came out cute, but I feel like this needs to, that needs to be a little thicker to support this craziness. But yeah, I see paprika in the future. Hey, everybody, all right, let me come back to you and say good night properly, even though I'm gonna see you in the morning. I'm gonna see you at 12 tomorrow. There we go, all right. Ooh, okay, Ooh, that's me. I'm tired. Oh, God, am I tired. Thank you, Diane. It just looks okay. It looks okay. Hey, it's done. <laughs> it's the main thing. It is done. And I was working with the stupid box the whole time, right? It was just, you were more organized if you had the kit, right? You had all your strips lined up in color in a, in a rain, in the rainbow arc. So um, that made sense. But I ended up, it was a lot of fun with the punch needle, but I ended up with all these other crazies. We took out the quillies. We took out the pennies. Uh, we did a little bit of buttonhole stitch. All of this stuff is on ribbon candy hooking. So you can come back to me at any point, any time, and be looking at um, these videos to help you with the techniques in this project, including punch, right? That weren't the emphasis tonight. Hooking this thing up was the emphasis tonight. So thank you for sticking with me. It's always fun to be together. I do like it. I see possibilities with that. I really do. It could it could be something cute. So hey, I'll see you tomorrow for coffee time at um, noon Eastern Standard Time, and we will look we will look at fairy tales. We'll finish the fairy tale book. Uh, my favorite pieces were at the end, and then we'll look forward on Wednesday at also noon Eastern Standard Time. Oh, and also the uh, Design Like Paul Clay cat class is coming up on Wednesday. Make sure you're signed up for that. That's going to be Wednesday immediately after coffee time. Wednesday on coffee time, we're going to be looking at uh, the Celtic book, right? And that will be the beginning of the giveaway. So log on for that. Make sure you get the instructions to enter the giveaway for R Rug Cooking Magazine's The Celtic Book, right? So we will do that on Wednesday, but in the meantime, I will see you tomorrow on Monday. Have a great time. Patreon members, thank you so much for your support. I log a lot of hours, and I really appreciate that backbone of support that pays the bills. I really appreciate it. It's how it's possible to do all this crazy stuff all the time and to be with you as often as I am, which 
is never often enough for me. But um, hopefully things ease up in the future and we can be, be together even, even more often. I will see you all tomorrow. Thumbs up. Thank you so much. Also, that's good, Kirsten. The virtual hooking is... He'll, the virtual hook-in is on Tuesday from 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 1 p.m. And Kirsten hosts that. So um, I will remind you of that at coffee time tomorrow, but be looking for that information. Either ask Kirsten. If you're on Facebook, it'll be posted in the Facebook group. But if you enjoy this kind of a setting where you are working on your project and there's other people all over the place who are working on projects too and you're actually on Zoom for that, you can have your camera off if you want, of course. If you're shy, you can have your camera off. Um, but it's a lot of fun to log on together. So that's every Tuesday, and Kirsten hosts that uh, graciously every Tuesday. You can get the answers to all of your questions there. Very friendly platform. Thank you for staying on with me. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. You're